everybody, welcome to the first episode of season 13 of Pete's Basement. I can't believe we're doing this that long, brother. Good to know you, man. Great. Welcome back, sir. Thank you. Wow. All right. Season 13, we got a lot of great stuff planned. I just got the new Pete's Basement heavyweight hoodie up on represent.com. We got a brand new t-shirt that we are going to debut on the 13th episode, which thanks to the brilliance of Chris Craddock, we looked at the calendar. Episode 13 of Peach Basement Season 13 is going to be Friday, March 13th. Wow! And we are going to debut a brand new Peach Basement the 13th t-shirt in Friday the th in an homage to Friday the 13th. Oh, that's gonna be fucking awesome. It's gonna be so fucking meta, like the whole world is gonna just implode right then and there. I'm totally there for that. To definitely. Friday the 13th, man, do not make any plans. Shout out to you, Craig. We're gonna be it, here, was, it's a fun. Friday, we're gonna get so fucking hammered. Yes, we are. Like I said, shout out to Craig, he's literally a rocket scientist. He really is, he's a legitimate rocket scientist. Yeah, yeah, good job. And a shout out to Cheeseburger, and Red, Red. and Liz, and Hannah, and all of you out there in Peach Basement Land. If it weren't for any of you, all of you, none of us would be doing this still. Thank you so much for all the views, the, the comments, everything. Use why we do this. Use are more than fans. Use are friends. Seriously. Thank you to everyone. And thank you to Eric, our new patron. Hey! Salud! Welcome to the party, you buddy. and the rest of you Peach Basement patrons are doing the Lord's work, I tell you. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> salud! Salud, salud, Janelle. Happy, Happy New Year! Year. Happy, Happy New, New Year. Year, everybody. Happy New Year, brother. We got a great show for you tonight. We're going to talk about the Ooh. Lock and Key trailer. We got the Birds of Prey trailer, for what it's worth. We got the New <laughs> Mutants trailer. <laughs> <laughs> and we got a whole bunch of comic books, not the least of which is Marvel's X from Alex Ross's brilliant mind. Mm. We've got Donny Cates' Thor, Marvel's Incoming. We've got Miles Morales' The End, DC's Daphne Byrne, Antarctic's Badass, IDW's I Can Sell You a Body from Valiant. We got The Visitor, IDW's The Kill Lock, and Dark Horses' Our Encounters with Evil. Mm. Well... We've already got our drinks. We've already started. So don't let us get ahead of you. Grab your drinks. Salud. And let's get this party started. Let's do it. <clears throat> Want to start with the bombs? Oh, yeah. Got... Let's start with the bombs. I've... We got some shadow bombs. I have a brick and nerd news bomb, too. Oh, I got all the way here. Ooh. Excellent. Yeah. Let's oh, do shadow oh, and then you. Now, last season saw the big reveal of the shadow as Mikey Sutton, mm -hmm. who has been feeding us information for the past, I would say, eight years or so, that we've been in touch and becoming really good friends with Mikey. Mikey the God. I mean, the, the man just, he knows so many people on the inside, and he just knows everything. So thank you, Mikey, for all the great information. What do we got? All right. Christian Bale is about to join the MCU, according to Collider. Bale is in talks for an undisclosed role in Thor, Love and Thunder. Awesome title. Yeah. I spoke to my source, Mikey Sign, and he told me he heard from two insiders who revealed that the role is possibly the voice of Better Ray Bill. Sign added that because discussions are in the early stages, Bale could end up with a different character, but Better Ray Bill is who Marvel Studios wants him for. Can I interject something? Mm -hmm. oh, we got more on oh, Thor? There, I haven't... There's definitely more on Thor. Oh, okay. Thor. Go ahead. <clears throat> However, shortly after receiving this leak, Sutton acquired another text message, one from somebody closer to the matter. This particular individual claimed that the Silver Surfer was being developed for Love and Thunder, adding that Bale is actually being offered to play Norton Rad. If all this sounds confusing, actors from Marvel Studios aren't always told which roles they are competing for. That's Marvel true. Studios can operate like improvisational jazz. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the perfect casting isn't immediately apparent. For example, Lee Pace originally auditioned for Star-Lord before becoming his enemy instead. Uh huh. That worked out. Yeah, that, I could not imagine that man in in a hero's role. He's just such a good villain. He's got that voice. But plus, Chris Pratt was so much weight and told himself up. Oh my God, no! Yeah. He, he's and I mean, he's got that. I can't imagine Lee Pace having that comedic timing. Yeah. That Chris Pratt has. Lee Pace is just. He's just got that voice that, mm -hmm. like, it, it it commands you to do shit and gives you homework at the same time. Like it's. Crazy. The, the takeaway from these leaks is that Better Bill and the Silver Surfer have a solid chance of appearing in Thor's latest adventure, 
whether Bale starts as one of them or not, and recent reports of Keanu Reeves as a surfer are untrue. It's good. I'm actually really happy that Keanu Reeves is not going to be the silver surfer. So that that's one. Let's get that out of the way because true. The like I just I don't know. I know Keanu Reeves is a good actor. He's got he's definitely got that monotone. T- yeah. Uh, concept for the Silver Surfer because yeah. he could just be Neo all over again. I mm. think. Um, but I just I hear him being Ted too much for the Silver Surfer. Which like, yeah. whoa, dude! Like, no. Did no, you no, see no. that movie with the remake he did where um he comes to Earth as an alien? Yeah. Uh, it was a uh, not Close Encounters. Uh, in War of Worlds. Yeah. So he, he, I think he could do Norman. I don't want him to, but I think he could. Was it War of Worlds? No, War of the Worlds. Fucking all about. War of Worlds was Tom Cruise. Yeah, it was Tom Cruise. Was, I know he's. I know exactly. We all know. The day the earth stood still. Yeah, 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 yeah. There you go. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. go. Pull that one out of my yeah. ass. Yeah, you did. I'm gonna yeah. tell you this much right now. R- right next to the cage. One. <laughs> it was actually that that note was actually in the birdcage. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't want to hear Batman as better Ray Bill. I don't want the Batman. But aren't you waiting for a spaz out on set just to see? Aren't you waiting for that? Like you waiting for that one moment that from the spaz out. I like Christian Bale. I just I haven't forgiven him clearly. Just throwing that out there. Now I'm speculating this on my own here, but we have Jane Foster getting the hammer of Thor. We we pretty much know that. Whole thing's happening, yeah. right? Yeah. At this it's, point, it's, it's, it's literally. In happening. order for that to happen, don't we need Gore the God Killer? No, no, you don't need it. No, you know if what? I by... thought about that too, though. I thought about who, that. When... Who else is big enough and bad enough at this point to be a Thor villain in a fourth sequel? The Enchantress could be in it, but she's not big and bad enough. She can be because you could. She could be elevated by the MCU. No way. No, yes, especially with nah. Love and Thunder. Nah. And she comes and tries to enchant I think she's about to see her coming back. And, and because he's so hot for this sexy blonde, he can't lift a hammer anymore because he's in love with a corrupt bitch. Nah, I, I need... Nah, I Gore, need Gore. Gore would be perfect. Gore would be perfect. I think that would be a great I've had, Like Gore, Gore, Gore with like Bale's Gore. voice Gore. would work. I know you have. Gore with Bale's voice would actually fucking work. Yeah, it would. It would work. Yeah. Holy fuck, it would work. I, 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 I just throw my two cents into everything. the ring. Like, I, I would I would be completely amenable to that. But if he's not gore, if he's not gore, not for nothing, and, like, I know I'm just throwing this out there in the universe, they're probably trying to do some cheap shit and trying to force Ares into this bitch. I'm okay with Ares. But not him being Ares. I don't want him... I, I want to say Hercules, too, speaking of other gods. But someone mentioned Hercules' name... Tom Hardy would be great. Um, Tom Hardy Ares. would be a great. Hurt. Yeah, but they're not, they're not gonna double yes, dip. They're not gonna Ares, double, no, dip. No, no, no. Like a double dip. Also, uh, I, there was a brief discussion, I, I believe, amongst us of Bald of the Brave showing up yeah. because he's the only one of the the whole oh, the, the, the uh, Warriors three, three and, and the brethren yeah. thereof yeah. who has not shown up yet. I'm alright. I'm not showing Christian up. Christian Bale is too old for Bald of the Brave. Bald of the needs to be a young buck. So yeah. Yeah, I'll tell you who I would like to like see as fucking Hercules if we can pull it off. Not for nothing, Michael Bennett can do it. He's I short, that. but I mean camera angles work. Camera angles work. Yeah. Like Michael Bennett can do it. Like what? He's like five eight, five nine. He's short. He, you know, he's like our height, bro. He's like five six. Five, but he's seven. got he's got diesel. Like, yeah, he's fucking jacked up. Yeah, he's been jacked since Spartacus. Yeah, that's right. Lord of the Rings showed us camera angles work. Bro. Yes, they do. Yeah, I mean, look at me. That was like and actually twenty, 20 years, years old. old. I mean, look at Stephen Amell. Hello. True. What else we got? Love you. All right. Scott Derrickson left Multiverse of Madness because he wanted more of a horror direction for the film. So this is, the, this is why the director of Doctor Strange has left the film. Yes. This news just dropped, by that's, the way, that's only my, like an hour right. or so ago. The movie and script on the wind changes after Disney acquired the Fox IPs. It's now more of a House of M movie, larger in scope, tied in with WandaVision. It started to evolve beyond what he saw. Kevin Feige has to move the MCU forward, and multiverse became the significant bridge to the future, especially with the Illuminati. So now, now this, I have, I have that. This the this the news. I, this the news I want to break. Okay. So, friend of mine texted me when this news dropped, and the first call they're gonna reach out to tomorrow is to Jordan Peele. Ooh, Ooh. Oh, I pray to God he picks up the fucking phone. Why wouldn't he? Does he have time? 
I mean, like you make time for a Marvel movie. I'm saying uh, right now, right now, right uh, now, no, he's no, right now, right now, right now with his with uh, with his productions on uh, Monkey Paw Productions doing fucking uh, Hunters on uh, Amazon Prime. On top of that, he's working on the second season of freaking um of Twilight Zone for uh, for CBS All Access. Which if you didn't see season one, revisit it. I'm revisiting it now. What of uh, uh, of Twilight, Twilight Zone the reboot? Revisit it now. I I was very very entertained. Especially with replay and fucking the visitor with Stephen Young. Oh goodness! But that's the first call to my sources that's going to be made tomorrow. Very interesting. I love him to touch that. Yeah. See, like I, I like the idea of Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness being a horror flick. I style. like that too. Me because too. you could bring in Nightmare and really show what this crazy motherfucker is capable of. Mm-hmm. Nightmare, you can even fucking tease him with fist. So you can, you, there's so many avenues you can go with this shit. But I understand that they do need, they exactly, they need that eight lane highway of, you know, ways to branch off into, into phase four and phase five. So, mm-hmm. I get it. I mean, we, we can might as well track right into New Mutants from there. Because New Mutants is a horror movie. Yes. And, as far as we know... Let's just throw this at it. has nothing to do with the MCU. This is the last vestiges of the Foxverse as it is. Is there that... Here's my question. It's a long time to come up. It's, it's a very long time. And there's so many reshoots. Three years. And all Because we saw a trailer with the whole faces in the wall thing years ago. Yes. Why put years. so much work into this if it's not going to be somehow connected? But that's my thing. And as far as we know, it's not connected. The only thing... The only reason I'm speculating is that could it be in a, in, in a you know stinger scene at the end in a post credit scene because this is veritably a who's who of young talent mm-hmm. from Magic the kid from fucking uh, Stranger Things, Stranger Charlie, Things Charlie thank you. I, I was not gonna come up with that kid's name mm-hmm. what's her name from Game of Thrones oh, uh, Maisie Williams for fuck's sake Maisie. this is every new kid that you see I know Magic I've seen her yeah. and shit I, I can't place her uh, name. Anya Taylor Joy, Anya Taylor Joy. You're good. He's good. I've been drinking. I've been drinking. The, you don't get young talent like this. No, unless you don't. want this movie to go somewhere. But I have people who they cast as fucking um as fucking uh Sunspot. I thought that was I'm sorry in advance. Does have some real light skin shit. So, Ro- so he's supposed to, to be dark. It's dark. It's supposed to, it's, yeah. it's, it's like he's he's dark. It's, it's dark to you after yeah, yeah. Puerto Rico. Yeah, literally. Yeah, literally. He's yeah. like my complexion. You is he at least Latino? I don't even know for sure, bro. I mean, I don't think they would do that at this point. In- I don't think they would do it, but like he's very fair skinned for that role. I asked the one beef I had about the casting. As long as his heritage is there, I think we're okay. I I know I can settle and deal with that, but like. That's the one thing that stuck out to me. Oh, There's gonna be some backlash. If it's, if it's, it's always backlash. Yeah, okay. Do I actually, always? Because I had I had the same kind of beef with freaking um when um uh, when they did the the X Men reboot and they cast Alexandria Ship to be Storm. Mind you, I think Alexandria Ship is a lovely actress, but I thought she was too light to play Storm. Like if I could pick Storm right now for the new reboot, right now, right now, my perfect cast for Storm right now mm-hmm. is Sadell Noel. She plays, she plays, uh, um, she's on Glow. You have mentioned her before. Yes. yes. She, she is the perfect cast for Storm right now. She's, she's in her young 30s. She's beautiful and she can actually act. Okay. Make it happen, Kevin Feige. Kate has a question asking if we have any more meetups for this year. I'm working on stuff right now. It is just the beginning of the year. It's definitely going to happen. No, no, definitely. Mm-hmm. definitely. Like, uh, we will def. Uh, I can say this, not officially, but unofficially, we'll be back at the 13th step in a hard, with, with a hard body count. Like, yeah, we're going to be back there and also uh, other places that might want to tickle our fancy. Excellent. Yes. I do enjoy my fancy being tickled. Uh, and me too. Me yes. Too, me too. Me too. I remember a long time ago. Your fancy was tickled? No. Um, what is it? <laughs> the perfect casting. Was a mom, mm. and okay. I, I can't like not see that ever. Even now, no, no. even don't get me wrong, she's still gorgeous. She's fucking amazing. Oh, happy birthday, David Bowie! Ah, uh, I can't tell you, I got no drink. Yeah, you you will always be my star, man. Yeah, screw you, DC. I'll take a, I'll take a little top off. Thank you, sir. Very much. He would have been awesome. As anything. <laughs> <laughs> 
Anything. Yeah. Anyways, so yeah, no, in my mind, it's like, I mean, she's she's a goddess. She's yeah. literally a goddess. So I I need that caliber actress. Holly Berry was nice, but yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah, uh, I figured that Lord just mentioned uh, Holly Gra- uh, for Vivica Fox would have done a better job. Like now, you know, not for back in '95, not I, now. I can't even say that. I can't even say she would have done, done a better job than freaking Holly. I can't say that. She's not hotter than Holly. Hot, yes. Ooh. Mm. I'm just gonna true. throw that out there. I said it. Uh, it's in now. There's no taking it off the internet. In Independence Day, she was hotter than Holly. Oh, she, no, she was hot in Independence Day, but hotter than Holly. Mmm. And See, Holly, Holly, Holly had just this charisma not, and this. Not sure, like, Holly just dropped, you know, she was strictly business and, like, she's freaking already, um, you know, Swordfish came out. Like, she was on some. Let me take you back to 1995 and Pete's Mind. The only one hotter than fucking Vivica Fox was Tyra Banks. Oh, so but I, I wouldn't let her be Storm. No, no, no. She could Storm me. But, yeah. You know, like, she was fine in, uh, what was the, the high, crazy. Uh, higher Learning. Higher Learning, thank you. And uh, freaking as as um, as the second choice in freaking Love and Basketball. Look it up, kids. Oh, it's a nice choice. Justin Lucas from uh, freaking uh, Gotham could play Storm. Not bad. That's She's not a bad so choice. Fine. That's not a bad choice. I'm not mad at that. You know what not I'm mad at that at all. She's a beautiful hot chick that was fucking Gallifrey's uh, sister. Aha. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Let, let's look at this New Mutants thing for a second. Mm-hmm. Okay. Do we have a confirmation or is it still just speculation that the Shadow King is the Big Bad? No, no. I think the Big Bad, in my opinion, I'm pr- I'm like, I will bet the Dollar Ranch that I own in my mind. That's Demon Bear. This is the Demon Bear story. Hand think, down. Wow. Oh, this is totally Demon Bear. Right. See, like, Demon Bear? Oh. You see how the Titans always go to Brother Blood and Deathstroke? Yes. Demon blood is like demon bear. Demon, demon bear, bear is like is, is like. Bi- I'm picturing like an evil teddy bear, like a teddy scare. Eh. No, like demon bear. Demon bear is some deep shit. Like if they go to that route with fucking with uh, fucking uh Moon, with Danny, I'm in. See, the, you notice there's a scene where somebody looks like he's wearing a helium mask. And I mean, if this is like the Hellfire's Club. They, they, they got the, like, the, yeah, the crazy yeah, point that out, and I had to relook at the fucking trailer again. I'm like, yo, you know what? They look even, like that. They look like the henchmen of the Hellfire yeah. Club. Yeah. Yes. So, like, if that'd the, be crazy. Like, if the Hellfire Club and Demon Bear is in this movie. What like, the fuck is Demon Bear? You gotta help me out here, because I have right, no so, idea. Uh, God, I cannot pronounce his name correctly. Bill uh, Sagenwick? Oh, yeah, no, no, just. Sigowitz. Sigowitz, yeah. yeah. Chris Clemmock, Bill Sanders. Well, I, I want to say it was issue 21. There was a saga of freaking. There's a story of Demon Bear where, like, he would go to fucking. He started with freaking Danny and just torture her with dreams, and it spread it out throughout the team. And who this this is like his his code name, his villain name, the Demon, Demon Bear. Bear. Like it's like it's like it's like it's like a real like you know. It's, I can't put it in a word, but like, it was so, it was so fucking, like, deep and dark for that time in comics. Do you have this book? Like, this series? Uh, right, yeah. Alright, I'll borrow it from you, if anything. But, like, literally, like... Because I thought, like, when I seen the faces moving through the wall and shit, and I seen all the, you know, the, the shadow creatures or yeah. whatever moving, I thought it was the Shadow King. Because I'm just thinking, like, who's a big enough bad that people would know to be it? And... Maybe it was Mr. Sinister. Because true, I know the New Mutants aren't that known. That is also true. No, no, they're, 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 but wouldn't they bring? Wouldn't they want to bring true. them to the forefront with a named villain? To like, here's a group you don't know about facing a dude that you do know about. Mm. Oh, let's get some breaking news. Oh, what do we got? Uh, Mark Paul Gus Gus here. Is officially on board with the Save by the Bell reboot. Is that fucking Morris? He's at, he's officially back. Please tell me he's the new the new principal building. No, no, uh, I don't know yet, but like he's definitely on board. Uh, so he's he's going to do both shows. He's going to do that and mix this, which is a great show on ABC. You've you've spoken about that before, actually. Yeah, like if you want to relive the eighties, knock yourself out because that's a lot and it's huh. fun and it's it, it's woke. Yeah, yeah, like it's. I don't like, mean to get into blackish. I don't want to get into br- um grownish. Yeah, grownish. You have to be like. That age. Yeah, you have to be a millennial and, like, you know, just, like, say fuck it. Yeah. But mix it, mix it and fucking Blackish. Blackish is automatic to me. Like, I took a year off and came back. Because, like, it got too real to the point where, like, wow, I had to check myself. Mm. 
Because the stuff uh, I didn't acknowledge in my own life, but that's all neither here or there. But mixed is, is just a great way to just reflect on how far we've come, but yet we really didn't. Okay. And like that is is written well. It's like it's so well written, and like the cast is amazing. Uh, freaking uh, uh, Mark Pogosi. I can never pronounce his name correctly. No, it's some, Gosler. Gosler. Well, I think I think that's Gosler. a cologne you're talking about. No. No, no, no. It, it, they say gospel, but I don't go to it. No, he pronounces it okay. differently. He pronounces it differently from what we say. It does he really? Yeah, yeah. He pronounces it differently from what he says. It's not like uh, French on national uh, TV. No, it's, uh, his mom's like Asian, Netherlands. Like, it's really? Like, oh, he's so mixed. He's so mixed. Did like, I he, know that? Yeah, like he's a lot. Good job. But uh, him, he's like the biggest corn fed white boy you can possibly throw on TV. Nah, he's but he's not. No, no, no. He's he's you know he he's like good job by good job by those jeans. All right, Zach Morris. Yeah. Good for you. Yeah, but him, Tika Sumter, the mother of uh, fucking um old boy, uh, the grandfather was fucking hilarious. Like, I think one of the greatest jokes he said on the show so far was like, "Oh, it's three o'clock. Might as well get some cocaine." <laughs> <laughs> hey. Sometimes it'd be like that. Yeah, but like, neither here there. That, that was, that, that's the news I had. But like, I'm looking forward to fucking New Mutants. And I, I was, you know how I felt about this shit. Yeah, that's the first one. I'm like, dreading it. I'm like, I don't want to see this shit. It's going to come out. Hopefully it's going to come out like Skinamax. Mm -hmm. and I know what's going <laughs> But no, this, the, the, the second trailer, it shows me how much Dizzy got involved with the reshoots. Yeah. And if you're going to the demon bear aspect, I'm fucking in. I'm in. Now, there's other trailers I'm not in on, but we'll get to that later. But this one I'm in on. Lock and Key. Yes. I have been waiting for this. I just, I, I was expecting it to show its face way earlier than a month in advance. We're only probably going to get this trailer at this point. This is it. That's all we're getting. That's all we're getting. And, you know, it starts in a month. I'm cool with that. February 7th. February's, February's going to be a good month. February's going to be a great month for like... Nerds everywhere. Yeah. What else happened in February? Oh shit! You got dad. You got fucking um. Oh hey, Dave Parole, the shout out. What up? Um, you got dad. You got um. I got Narcos personally. Narcos. Okay. Nar Narcos. Well, something Miami. comes out the same weekend as Narcos. Um, Narcos Miami. Miami. I thought it was Narcos um Mexico season two. Mexico Miami tomato tomato. I'll never tell. It's for the M. It ain't like Umbrella Academy and any of that shit, right? No, no, no. Yeah. Umbrella, Umbrella, Umbrella is being pushed back to. Uh, to my understanding, the first trailer for Umbrella Academy is going to be around March, and their the target the target date is July. Okay. Because they want to they want to premiere before season two of the boys, and that's probably going to be like around October, October or so. August. Okay. They're looking at August. Hasn't well, set up permanent date, but they want to get on before the boys. Okay. Now that here's the thing about Lock and Key. Do we know yet for sure if it's going to be more than one season? No, no, it's, 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 a, it's, it's a two commitment season already. Okay, because the thing I was worried about, that now, I, again, I got to preface this. I, I always have to tell this story. I slept on this series for so long. So long. Told you. Ramon and Steve busted my chops to no end, no end. to read it. And it still stands to this day when I finally read it. I put down the sixth book and I immediately picked up the first book. Within three seconds, I said, Boop, and, Boop. and I started reading the shit again to look at all of the stuff that I know, the hints that they dropped that I missed going in because I know they dropped them. And I said, I'm going to read this thing again. And I'm going to read it one more time before February because I want to. This stands as probably one of my top three ever. Series, it's so good, and thank you for getting me on it. And well, fucking never, never ceasing your incessant fucking poking to get me to read the shit because I would have just you know patronized you the whole way through. Yeah, that said, I was really worried that they were gonna condense this story, not knowing if they were gonna go for mm -hmm. another season, condense this to one season, eight episodes, or whatever, and butcher it because this deserves. To be spread out as much as humanly possible. Oh, hell yeah. It's like you have a squinge of peanut butter and you've got four kids to make sandwiches for. Spread the shit out. But then, spread you the go to the store. 
the night before, and you get more peanut butter. That's where we want this. We want more peanut butter on each of the sandwiches. The sandwiches, in this case, are we, the viewers. The peanut butter is the lock and key storyline in this case. Are you following the analogy? Yeah, let's care for you. Yeah, but you like where I'm, how I'm keeping it consistent. You do. Yeah. So let me ask you a question, both of you guys. So, pie. Is it? Always. Don't forget. <laughs> All right. Fair enough. Two questions. This is a two-parter. Number one, what's the one part of the trailer that made you like, oh, God, they did that and they showed it? Good question. The door in the cave. Oh, same, 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 same. That door in the cave is sexy. And I was like, how did they, are they going to... Is it gonna be one of those low budget shit where it's always in the fucking house? No, like like out of the cave. Like 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 like, like, like are, are are we doing this right? Like, like are we doing this? I'm like are we doing this? Like yes. That's it. And I liked the door in the cave, but that was what made me worry that they were condensing it all into one thing. But then I remember like okay, you could probably pull the door in the cave by like you know the third or fourth mm -hmm. graphic novel. Uh, so. Having said that, like, that really was fucking awesome. Like, oh shit, and like you're trying to like look behind the door, like where, where are the thingies, where are the thingies. Mm -hmm. Um, I think when the girl stuck the key in the back of her neck, mm -hmm. like that was just yeah, like okay, this is gonna blow a lot of people's minds. Pun unapologetically intended. <laughs> like I like I don't know, like the girls just looking at the key. Yo, by the way, by the fucking way. Did you guys see the secret trailer to Lock and Key? Yes. No. Get a high five on that. Yep. Apparently, there was a little secret link inside of the, the YouTube link. clip. Yeah. Like, it's in there. Like, all of a sudden, you it's move a, your culture and it's it changes. It's a trailer trailer. And you click it, and it shows the guy using the heart key on himself. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. So, so Dave Peralta just mentioned fucking the other joint that popped in my mind when she used the key in the back of her, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the key in the back of the neck. So I think it just blew. I think people just blew the mic. They didn't know about that. We just knew. That's what exactly. Oh. Like, for, for regular people who have ne no concept of what they're about to get into, that click is r literally mind blowing. Yeah. Like, literally, like lock, what did she just do? Lock and key is like. On some real shit, Lock and Key is basically fucking a never ending story with Tourette's. Like, you don't know what fucking door that they're gonna go to next, and like, you have the anxiety, like, oh my god, where's this going? I've already told two people, they're like, should I read the comics beforehand? And, and they're not comic readers, yeah. you know? So I'm like, I don't wanna tell you yes, like, you need to read it. I think the show will probably do a really good job of explaining the oh, shit. By far. But if you do decide to read the comics, one, I can give them to you, and two, you, I promise you, you will not be disappointed. I'm not trying to force this on you, but you will not be disappointed. Like, personally speaking, I will say this right now. While those who didn't even know what the fuck Umbrella Academy was until it came out, this will hold you over until season two of Umbrella Academy. And not mm -hmm. only will it hold you over, it'll actually have you craving for more. Because the curiosity alone... Will have your mind going. Do you think it's gonna be scary, like scary, scary, or like goosebumps level scary? No, I, I, no, no. I think scary. No, I think scary. More, like, more than goosebumps. One last thing that I thought was cool about yes. Lock and Key was the sh the, using the shadow key and the shadow moving up the stairs. Oh, that was so great! Yeah, that was the second. Yeah, that was the third joint. Yeah, that's that was where I see a lot of the creepiness and the horror. Coming. And it, it's really great for us having read it, and you're like, oh, I know what's going on there. Ooh, that's good. Yeah. Seeing this makes you really regret never picking up those keys. Oh. <sighs> See, that's, that's one of those things you, as a geek, it's like, damn it. Because now, I told, I told now those keys are going to be all over like, oh, oh, eBay, but no, they're going to no be stupid no, expensive. No question, yeah. no question, no question. What the Black Keith is going to buy it for like triple the amounts? Like, so that, there's a Sabrina trailer? I didn't even know that. Yeah, so I truly like, the Sabrina season two and a half or three, depending on how you feel about it. They dropped a music video today. Something called We're All Going to Hell. <laughs> and it shows snippets of what's coming for this season. For example... New member Sky Marshall, she was uh, she was on the first season of Black Black Lightning. She's the one with the um, how can I say this? She was a vice principal. Yes, <gasps> she's fine. Yes. Oh my gosh, she had some hips and curves on her. Yeah. That's uh, the military girl. Yes, yes, yeah. yeah. Former Air Force. Woo! Thank you for your thank you for your service. So she is on this season. She's hotter than his wife. Woo, child. 
Anyways, anyways. This is so a topic. They, so they dropped. So they dropped that that video trailer today, and there's a lot of Easter eggs in that shit. So if you don't, if you haven't seen it yet, go on YouTube or go to Netflix, or whatever, or even like, even on Instagram, they have look at that shit because it's fucking. The trailers are ridiculous. I mean, the Easter eggs in there are ridiculous. That and that drops. I don't want, not next week, but the week after. It's coming soon. Yeah, yeah no, it's in January. Yeah. And by the way, for the record, I I don't. Nafisa Williams is the only girl on that show, as far as I'm concerned. It's just. <sighs> now, I, I'm sorry, N- 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 Nafisa Williams is gorgeous. No she's, question. She's um, fucking uh, the mother's gorgeous. The mother's gorgeous. The yeah. mother's um, sister. Who's um, legal, by the way. I mean, she's gorgeous. <laughs> thank, thank you, Kate. Uh, January twenty fourth. That's when uh season two and a half three drops. Um, also, not for nothing, Erica Alexander, uh, for those who don't know who she is, she is Max from Living Single. Oh my god. Did yeah, she, she plays her she psychic looks, help. She looks amazing. She's, she's like well. my age. She's god the one you. that's helping Jennifer? Yes. No yes, shit. Yes, 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 and she's yes. also an, um, a fellow alum from Living Single, like um, Black Lightning was. Yeah. He did a Khadija. Yeah, yeah, yes he did. Points. Points. Wow. Points. Yes, yes. Yes. Tifa, which is yes. hilarious. And China McClain is a great singer. For, all right, fun fact about China McClain and her, like, she has beautiful sisters. That's uh, funny, uh, Jennifer. She has beautiful sisters that they all act, and they're all phenomenal. Like, the McClain sisters are bad as fuck. Like, they they started they started somewhere even in the Disney jump off or whatever, but they are bad as fuck, and they are so talented, so amazing. Sorry to be clapping. I've been, I, I've been around the way too much. But, like, they are so dope. And just, like, Everyone, uh, I want to make sure. Give it. China is Jennifer. Laura and I cannot remember the last name, the last sister. But all three of them are phenomenal. And like, boom, 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 boom. And also, not for nothing, Grace can get it too. Sorry to be a man, but yeah. Great. Oh, yo, she's fine too. Yeah, yeah, like, like, like. I love the, I love the diversity. And also, I don't know. I forgot to mention because like, real shit. Breaking Nerds has been on vacation for a good, <laughs> like two weeks. Proud of it. Nothing wrong with that. Everything nerd wise on the CW got renewed. Yes. Like Lightning, Legends, Flash. Um, Which is awesome about Legends. Yeah. Because their, their season hasn't even started yet and they got renewed. Yeah. It's like like at, uh, Batwoman, Supergirl, they all got renewed. And apparently there is a secret show that's in the works right now. Not Superman and Lois Lane. There's another show in the works. Which we knew about. It's going to be the fucking... It's going to be Arrow and the Outsiders, or whatever the fuck it's going to be called, because it's going to be his daughter, his son, fucking... Uh, what's his name's other kid? Yeah, Daniel's other kid. Did, yeah, I'll fucking help. And oh. Ollie's going to be the Spectre. Stoke. Which... which that, did you see the, the quick trailer with him in the hood? Uh, no, I saw the only thing i seen was him in the hood, but i seen the quick trailer of, of Barry freaking out when he's like... There's no way out of here. There's no way out of here. And Supergirl's like, I'll slap the shit out of you. Sit down. Yeah, sounds good. L- listen, I'm... When I'm like... When the, I, it's been a while since I've been here, so I have to, like, go back to, like, just freaking Crisis. Permission to be myself? Go ahead. go ahead. Let's go back to Crisis. Oh, my God! <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God! Like, I was working... Uh, like, I was, like, working on location, like, literally, with my laptop... I would like get off of work at like one, two o'clock. I'd be back at my hotel. I pass out a fucking like three something to watch fucking Crisis. And Berlanti, we trust. Great job, amazing Easter eggs. Fucking you flipping the script with fucking instead of fucking like you know Supergirl dying, you put Superman dying with Lois carrying him. Great job. The whole twist of fucking Lex Luthor. And I don't want to get too much, but those who have not seen it yet, Shame. CW is streaming it free and live on their app right now as we speak. And you can also go watch the uh, Beyond Crisis or whatever it's called, Crisis Aftermath yes. with Kevin Smith. Yes, That's yes. so worth it. Well, it's like that, not for nothing. Good job to you, Kevin Smith. This actually yeah. is a worth- worthwhile fucking uh, after show. Yes. They had none other than Kevin Conroy, the Batman yes, himself, yes. who played one of the most fucked up Batman we've ever seen on TV or in comics ever. And it was phenomenal. Yes, it was. It was. Phenomenal. Like, every, all three episodes was well written, well, well documented, and most importantly, 
it made sense for people who had no idea what the fuck was going on. Like, newcomers could have gotten to Crisis. Yeah. And you did go not back. have to watch the rest of the show is what yeah. was going on. I haven't watched the shows. I dropped all the CW shows except for Black Lightning. Yeah. And but like, when I hasn't started yet. Like, 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 literally, like, literally like, when, when fucking, when they went the fucking, you know, small vote, Tom Bowling's universe, that right there got a tear, get, gave me a tear in my eye because, and I got a tear in my eye when Lex tries to kill him and it doesn't work. Wait, and, why? And Tom's like, yo, I gave him my power. He's like, let me, let me straight. Do you have the power to be a god? To be a father? How dare you? And he still looks like you can bench press a truck. Yeah. He is the only human that should shape like that. He's oh my huge. God. Oh my God. Grab uh, Tyler Hoechlin. Give me props too. No, no. Listen. Tyler Hoechlin been fucking on point to the Team Wolf. Yes, but I watched it. Absolutely. He's kind of little compared. Like when I you mean, look at Brandon Routh in the costume and you see oh, that difference. Oh, oh. Yeah. I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen. I cheesed so much inside my pants when fuck I saw him in that fucking suit. <laughs> It was like, sorry, cheese. Like, like it was so beautiful to see him in the chair. And then when they were both fighting, mm-hmm. and like just he Brandon Routh stole so many moments. And like Berlanti knew this shit. He wanted that. He wanted to fucking do justification for fucking Superman Returns, mm-hmm. and he did that for fucking Brandon. And great job by you, bro. With a TV budget. With, With a, a TV, TV budget. budget. So like that just shows you right now, it's not the money, it's the mindset. Yep. And this is the perfect time for me to segue into this. Uh, over the course of the Christmas and New Year's vacation, I had a birthday, turned 39. Oh. And oh, birthday punches. one of, go ahead, I'm going to hit you back. One of the fucking coolest gifts, I can't say that I got this year, that I've ever gotten in my whole life. Including the steamer? Including the steamer. Okay. The Regina steamer carpet cleaner. Oh, that is. Uh, so have you heard about these celebrity shout outs, these cameos? No. That these like Oh yeah, 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 the yeah, 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 yeah. These celebrities wish you a happy birthday and shit. Yeah. So they, and they go on for like maybe twenty to forty seconds or whatever. Well one one of my very, very best friends, Maria, took it upon herself to get me a happy birthday from none other than Batman himself. Kevin Conroy. Get the fuck out of here. Hell serious? yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. And not only, not only did, did he wish me a happy birthday, but it was like a three minute video of him talking about why Batman is fucking awesome. It was awesome. Right. And wishing me a happy birthday. Uh, I got questions. Time out. Yeah. Did you save it? Yeah, of course I saved it. Okay. It's going to pop up. Right about... No, save it, no. save it for the end of the show. Save it for the end of the show? Save it for the end of the show. All right, save it for the end of the show. Oh, my show. God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh so, my God. thank oh you, God. Maria, oh my for getting Woo. Batman to wish me a happy birthday. Woo. Make sure you tune Woo. in at the end credits to watch that. Woo. Kevin Conroy wishes me a happy Woo. birthday. You can never pay her back. I, will, can, I can never pay her back for that. She, she wants a kidney. Woo. That's about it. Yeah. I might give her mine. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, that's great. Wow. I get this text message and I'm looking and I'm like, that's Kevin Conroy. What the fuck is this? And I thought it was gonna be like like some like recorded thing. And he was like, Hey Pete, it's Kevin Conroy. And I'm like, the fuck am I watching? <laughs> Shit was crazy. Like that's like if I get a fucking cameo from like all my three like greatest crushes of all time in one joint. Like, give me. I right, I'm gonna say this out in the universe. God bless. Give me a cameo with freaking Charlize Theron, mm. Tracy Ellis Ross, and Joe mm. Scott. You could have any body part you want in my body. The amusing thing was, speaking of crushes, she did say, like, it was between that or Jennifer Love Hewitt, and I was like, you made a good Whoa. choice. I was like, I love her, but you made a good choice. Yeah. Mm. Well played. So thank you very much for one of the coolest birthday gifts ever. As well as this awesome decanter. That's, that's awesome. Like, that's like I, I'm, I'm jealous. Like, shit, that's great. Wow. And a happy new year to everybody as well. All right. Let's just close off the whole trailer nonsense. Birds of Prey. Uh, you got dibs. Okay. Thank you. I, Ramon watched this for the first time while he was down here, so I, I, I got I to see his reaction. And I will say this. It's unfortunate 
that this movie actually looks like it could almost be fun. Almost. If it weren't for the fact that sitting in the back of my mind, this entire movie revolves around Black Mask's dick pics. Yeah. As far as we know, that is still the plot line. Within some sort of diamond is a hard drive or something that contains the crime boss Black Mask's dick pics. And the Birds of Prey have gotten a hold of them. I don't know why. I don't know why Rosie Perez is Renee Montoya when there are way, way more ridiculously Stephanie hot. Stephanie Beatrice from freaking Brooklyn Nine-Nine should be Renee Montoya. Now, mind you, I love fucking Rosie Perez. She's a sweetheart, but she should not have been casted for this role. Mm-hmm. Stephanie, Stephanie Beatrice, fucking, uh, what you call it, from uh, Brooklyn Nine-Nine, she would have been the perfect fucking Renee Montoya. The perfect. Sofia Vergara and fuck you, I can't roll my R's. I almost failed Spanish class, but you know it is what it is. No, you don't have to. There's all the bars. Okay. No, I mean, like, no, like, look, like, Stephanie Beecher was the was the perfect choice to play fucking Renee Montoya. Perfect choice. She's bi. She acts. She knows her shit. She's she's fucking five eleven. Like, doesn't this look like it could have been a fun, funny movie? It could have been a great. It could have been a great movie. It could have been a great movie, and like, I was. When I put it up on Breaking Nerd News today, I was like, I don't want to do it, but I have to because I, I take pride in getting trailers first, but... I have no I'm, interest in this shit. I'm not, so I'm not, I'm not intrigued at all. No. Like, like, this is, I will call my boy Skeets to say, oh, can you give me this the day it comes out? Yeah, no, she, she definitely gave it off. Holy toy vibes. mackerel. Yeah, no, no, step, step, yeah, put this... Yeah, put it on the screen, yeah. Stephanie Beatrice, she's phenomenal, hilarious. Same. Her comedic Same. timing on fucking Brooklyn Nine-Nine is amazing. And she should have been fucking... I mean, she's not the her. only thing... Rosie Perez is not the only thing wrong with this movie. No, there's a lot of things wrong with this movie. Like, for example, the plot. Yeah, yeah. The whole concept. Number two, why is fucking Cassandra Cain 12? That's a good point. Number three... And I'll just say, Are we going to see her father in this, do you think? Most likely not. They're not even going to announce that shit at all. Like, I mean... You know what the only... I, I'm going to say this. Like the, the, the reason I say this looks fun, because you're right. The plot of the movie looks like ass meets. The interaction of the characters themselves is what looks fun to me. Like, I think the cast looks like it works really well together. Okay. And, Margot Robbie is gorgeous. We all know this. Mm-hmm. She can act. Like, sure, she really can't act. Her voice is annoying as shit. She is not horny. No. In any sense of the way. I know. I know. You know what it says? Well, like Tara Strong could fill the role at this point. You know what this movie is right now? This movie, fill the role. This movie is smoking aces in the DC Universe. Ooh. I never saw that. And, you, and you're flick. welcome. <laughs> and you're welcome. <laughs> I didn't mind it. <clears throat> That's the point. Uh. You saw all that star part that got that movie? Yeah, I know. Alicia Keys is holding a fucking clock in that shit. <laughs> I just... I think the cast worked really well together. I just... God, when I think back to the plot line of the whole thing, and I'm like, there's nothing making me want to go see this. At all. At all. No, I was like, literally, like... First of all, I'm like 85% sure that's Margot Robbie covering her fucking Bjork. It's so quiet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, mind you, that's one of my favorite Bjork songs of all time. I got beef already. There's no need to cover that song. The song is perfect as it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So was anybody the out there actually better. interested in Birds of Prey? By all means, let us know. Question and it's a wonderfully long title. title. And it's a wonderfully and, long title. I'm not even going into it. It's Birds of Prey. Yeah. Like, I, I still don't understand what was the purpose of saying that, hey... You know what I mean? Like, I, if you just wanted to be a Harley Quinn movie, you just say it's Harley Quinn. Yeah, Harley right. Quinn. With the, Harley Quinn and the Birds of Play. And the fact that they're like... I didn't even realize that Suicide Squad, the new shit, is a, is a reboot. I, I thought that it was a sequel. It's a remix. Yeah. It's a remix. Kate asked a question of, to me, of, are you yay or nay about Margot Robbie being Tank Girl? As of right now... Tank Girl? Yeah, I will say nay. No. I have someone better. To be fucking Tank Girl. Uh, oh, I think I made it re-up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we both do. 
Oh, this is going to be one of those episodes, huh? Yeah. I'm on vacation, sorry. Who you got? Who's Tank Girl? Alright, so, not for nothing. And, like, mind you, I saw her recently in person. And also, she's on the show now on CBS. And we all know her from our nerd life. Give me Jesse quick. Oh, Violet Bean. Yeah, give me Violet Bean. Oh, that's give a good t- idea. Give me Violet Bean as Tank Girl. I know she's not known to everybody else, but give me, give me Violet she's Bean. She's cute, yeah. Give me, give me Violet Bean as a fucking Tank Girl right now. Honestly, she has a sarcasm. She has a, she has a spontaneity. She can. Can play. I? No, I see that. Can yeah. I? Uh, Ooh. can I throw my two cents into the ring? All means, I'll give you change. And let's go with the Arrowverse. Just going by personality alone. What? Kate? Willa Holland. Oh, oh, oh. Willa can totally do it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Willa can totally do it. Every time I see Tank Girl, like, just the, the look on her face, it's like, that's Willa. Without fucking, like, without a doubt. No, you're right. Dave Peralta asked if we've seen the Harley Quinn TV series. Uh, I haven't yet. You I saw have. it. And while well, seeing, hearing Penny as a voice is. The rest of the show is beautiful in such a horrible way. Not horrible as it's bad. Horrible as in it's like it's not holding back. Uh huh. Like it's violent. It's gory. They've done everything except had sex on the show. Really? It's it's yeah. So they're like Harrison and shit. Yeah. The blood. Because after the yeah. first episode, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, all right, maybe. The first episode had me feeling the exact same way. Like Penny is in this shit. Bernadette is a better freaking um. Well, she did her voice in the... In the yeah, uh, in uh, Suicide Squad. Yeah. So I'm like, okay. All right, well... Oh. Uh, I got nothing to do Friday. God, what's the name again? God damn it. So I watched it. It grows on you. It's okay, all right. Does. Well, you know my rule. Like, I, give, I give any new show three episodes, you yeah. know? Melissa Rapp. Melissa Rapp. Thank you. Yeah. Who's fine also. Thank, yeah. So hot. Gorgeous, gorgeous. gorgeous. So, it, 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 it grows on you. You're going to start loving the characters. It's... It's actually quite funny. All right, that's good. That's a, that's good. Good to know. 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 Uh, in a closing note on all things TV, pop culture, whatever else, before we get into comics, Pete's Basement will be at the Brooklyn Comic Con, which is right here in Greenpoint this time around. The address is 72 Noble Street at the Brooklyn Expo Center. We will be there both days, Saturday and Sunday. Come and check us out. We will be doing panels. We'll be doing interviews. We will have uh, a table with all sorts of Peach Basement goodies and Lee's Art goodies. And we'll just be having some fun. Next week, we should have JD on the show as well as Sal from Brooklyn Comic Con. Nice. It's been a while since we had Jay on, so mm-hmm. it'll be good to read. To what day today again? That is Saturday and Sunday, the 25th and 26th, respectively. Okay. Bet. Definitely be the 26th. Alrighty. We will see you then. Yeah. And we hope to see you at Brooklyn PowCon. So once again, January 25th and 26th. Yep. Last at the Brooklyn get... Expo Center. Yes. 72 Noble Street. We'll see you there. Yes, indeed. That was a great, that was a great PSA. For, Thank you. Know, Thank you. Job. Appreciate it. That was, like, eloquently good done. Alright, so let's review some comics. Why not? First off, what uh, you've been gone for like three months now. I know. I, we I, have not seen you in a while. I know, I know. I what know. are you reading at this point? All right, so obviously uh, me, me and uh, me and uh, Ramon was uh, buying all and like just like shit on all mutants. So X Men like automatically. I'm, you I, actually stayed with X Men past. Uh, what the fuck was that series uh, that just House finished? of X Powers of Ten? Yeah, that's yeah. the one. Yes, I, I did. I stayed for the the, the, the relaunch. So, you like stay for the end credit scene? Yes, I did. I did. I did. So, I don't know what it was. What six books that came out? There yeah. was X Men, Excalibur, X Force, New Mutants, Fallen Angels, Marauders. Marauders. Yes. Out of those six books, I am devoted to three of them. Okay. The three that can get the get the shaft, Fallen Angels. Why? Yeah, that's a oh, oh it's it's all Quantum. Because Betsy Braddock and the Asian body chick, the assassin, are separated again. Yeah. And now she's taking over the name as fucking Psylocke. Okay. Yeah. But like, am I... Wait, which one? Betsy Braddock or Quanon? Is Quanon and Psylocke. Yeah. Quanon okay, is what? Psylocke. Who's Betsy Braddock now? She's now Captain Britain. 
Oh, where's her brother Brian? He's Brian. in the other world. Yeah. He, As Captain Britain also? No, he is um he's a he's a slave to the rhythm, basically. Yeah. So to the rhythm. Yeah, he, he basically Morgan, Morgana Le Fay. He's he sacrificed himself and his power to save basically uh Betsy. So now she's All I'm now. hearing is that old house song, I'm a slave to, to the dark beat. That's all you know it. You know it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. But yeah, I so that's that's another book I'm not reading like that. It's like, okay because it's interesting because you see Apocalypse stepping into a role where Apocalypse has been around for a few dozen years, right? And he's always been known as the tech savvy one, you know, the one access to celestial power, um, tech and stuff. In those years, he's also picked up some magical tricks. Mm-hmm. So that's very interesting and exploring that. It's it's again, it's not exactly the greatest book. Like I think X Men is the jewel. Yeah, out of all those books. Yeah. Yeah, Hickman's right. Just X-Men. Yeah. No, Hickman's, Hickman's right. And like, the first five issues... So of this would be the the actual true sequel to the... to the. Oh, series. no question. No question. Like, like I said, if I, if, if I gotta give you guys three books to read after House and Powers, it'll be X-Men number one, obviously. New Mutants number two, and X-Force three. Those are three books I would tell you, like, read immediately. Now, so, let let me ask you this, because I want to segue into uh, some other shit. Mm-hmm. What what the fuck is Mister Sinister up to? Because he don't look like he's playing fair with everybody else. No, no none of them are. Mm-hmm. Like maybe Magneto, Professor X, the regular X Men crew. They're all trying to work this out. Sinister has some plot. Apocalypse is tinkering with magic, and that's probably going to rock the boat. Magic, for magic, off. or magic, magic. Like, 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 like crystals like, and energy. Like, and, like, and, not, and, not Colossus's right. sister magic. No, 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 no okay. dark, 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 dark magic. Is she? No, shades. no, she's she's all in space. Yeah, uh-huh. she's all in space. Okay. In space. Uh-huh. Thank you, whoever got that. Okay, because now I don't, I have not admittedly read anything X involved since uh, House and Powers. Professor X got shot and killed. What? Professor X was killed. Uh, all, again? No, they bring it back. They have this like way of bringing music. Yeah, back the gold balls, yeah. the eggs. Yeah. I know. Yeah. His name is Egg now. How dare you? His name is Egg. His name is Strange. Egg. 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 Wait, do you remember that YouTube video? Egg. 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 Right, so, Egg. So, 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 quick recap of what happened. That so, first issue of X Force. Well, for, for the record, if y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Go on YouTube and search Don Hertzfeld. Yeah, we'll put some it on of the, the right greatest, now. fucking insane, hilarious animation you will ever find. Egg. That's all I've got to tell you. And after that, I watched uh, Google Cocaine Dinosaur. You're welcome to. Oh yeah, it's, it's always good. It never, it never dies. All right, so X Force issue one. Everyone's chilling, having a blast, some fucking crack hole, you know, doing it up. You know, the, the main objective is, you know, have fun, make more mutants, blah, blah, blah. So it's basically, it's basically a fucking orgy. Yes. Okay. There are people skydiving onto the island. Now, mind you, the beautiful thing about Krakoa is you have to be a mutant to get on the island. It's fucked up how they circumnavigated that little, it's, it's so fucked up. Yeah. So, these mercs get on the island and they start freaking murking everybody. Headshots, whatever it takes. And they shot fucking Xavier in the head. This is how they got on the fucking island. They fucking kidnapped Domino and spliced her fucking skin and, and skin grafted themselves like little strips skin. of Domino on you. So you'd be like little white little strip of skin because she's powder. so pale. Yeah. No, no, just just a mutant. Oh. You don't get her powers. Just you, 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 I thought you, they were you, going with her luck to get no. through the thing. No. Though. Oh, that's fucked up. Man. Exactly. Ex- they, they find her, yeah. but that's afterwards. And she's fucked up. So now, catching up to right now, the um, the ethical question is, do I kill Domino to make her feel better? To get her 100% healthy? Or, that's the choice she has. Do I die to be back to normal? Or do I live to remember what happened to me? Kill her so she can come back as a fucking not fucked up human being. No, but they're no. using Krakoa medicine to patch her up. Yeah. Still. The well, thing it's is, gonna twist you in the head. You, you you only remember the last thing Professor X downloaded from you. Yeah. So she will remember mm-hmm. the entire so, thing. So actually, at that point, they couldn't even bring her back. Yeah. Because he was still, you know, dead, dead. Yeah. 
Miss Marvel fix that now. Ms. Marvel, Kamala Khan, Ms. Marvel? No, no. Oh, shit, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Jean Grey. Jean uh-huh. Grey. Yeah. Oh. Put Wait, she's Ms. Marvel now? She's yeah. not yeah. Green dress Marvel everything. girl? No. Well, she's oh, no, yeah, okay, you're right. Marvel, yeah, she's Marvel girl. Wow. So many names. So, like, Marvel... So, a lot of fucking names, no, man. So like, so, like, so, like, Jean Grey is, is the last member of X-Force. Oh. Okay. And they basically bring her hand when they have no other choice. To either erase or just incite what needs to happen. Uh-huh, I'm trying here. You no, know, it's a lot. It's a lot to it get yeah. Like, like, and I like you, X-Force is the least, is the least of the books that is, that has you, like, you know, delving in and, like, re- trying to remember shit. Like, X-Force is fucking memento right now. Like, for Mer- mutants. Like, you're trying to remember how did this happen and just connect the dots. You know, all the other books. That's yeah. the one, it's the one book where, like, every dot connects. Mm-hmm. X-Men... The flagship book is a whole different thing. Between the fucking possible triz that's going on between Wolverine, Psychops, and fucking Jean Grey, to just like, you know, Krakoa getting in with some new beings, mm-hmm. to fucking the greatest flex move of all time in comics from the last issue of fucking X Men, where basically they went to fucking like a peace. A, a peace, UN peace meeting? U, thing? U.S. peace meeting. And do try to murk fucking Magneto Xavier and out pockets. and Apocalypse out in broad daylight and fucking a team of fucking, what was it? Uh, it was Shinobi, uh, not, not, not Shinobi. No, it was two people. Two people. Cyclops and Gorgon. Gorgon. That was their situation. Gorgon is like literally. I know Gorgon. Gorgon. He was the guy in the, in yeah. the Wolverine He's shit. He's Professor yeah. X's body right now. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. That's badass. Yeah. Yeah. And, and basically, they they. Man, you know, said this shit, and I'm like, I'm paraphrasing, but you get the gist. He basically did this: you try to just, you try to kill us, you try to exterminate us, and yet we still rise. So now you may be beneath our feet, and know that you tried. Basically, what he said: keep on trying, but we'll still be here. He outlined everything that they plan to do, which is pretty much, in one way or the other, take over the world. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like, we don't want the war. We just want our island. Mm-hmm. But you keep on poking the bear. It took you one month to try to kill me. Yeah. You, you, you failed, obviously. Which is not true. They succeeded, but... Yeah. They, but, yeah. yeah but, but, like, they had a backup plan. No yeah. backup plan. Uh, the humans don't fully know yet about the eggs. Right. It, so that's going to be something that has it's to be really, dealt with. Some of it could get really complicated. Like, the whole Hellfire Club thing. It's back. Mm-hmm. There's three rulers. Uh, Red Queen. Kitty Pride. Yeah. White Queen. Okay. Kate, Kate, right, yeah, she doesn't want to be called Kate anymore. Um, White Queen, Emma Frost, still looking delicious. And the Black King, Sebastian Shaw. Mm-hmm. His brother, his son's back was a little douche, but I remember him. Wolverine cut off his hand and a bunch of other parts. Holla. <laughs> um, so now we got to find out who's going to be their bishops and their knights, and that's hilarious. And then now there's a, a, a human version of the Hellfire Club, if you will, with characters that we haven't seen in a minute. You see that look? Yeah. It, 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 no, it's a lot. It's, it's a, lot. a lot. But if if you like the X Men, you'll dig this. I, I think you dig like this. the Cannon Father. The Cannon Father with the reboot. I'll give I'll give fucking Hickman credit for this. He's bringing names that we haven't thought about in fucking decades. Mm-hmm. Like little names that we haven't thought about in decades. Like one of the castles on fucking on, on fucking the Human Council is a creed. Like a. Like not Creed fucking up. No, no, Creed. Like, he's a Creed. And like and for those of all like think about fucking uh the extinction agenda. hmm That's his that's his air. Like they going Higman's going that far deep. And like, he's trying to make sense of it. Like I gave credit to Hickman and with House of uh, House of Power because he fixed literally three years of fucking X Men continuity. And fucking two issues. Yeah. He literally fixed it. Because, like, there was always, like, you know, uh, do your thing, but don't worry about us. We'll just pop a, pl- a character in there. And, hey, I'm here. Ha-ha, what's next? No. He's actually fucking breaking shit down at home. This is why this happened. Because of a timeline that happened when fucking Mora died. And, like, all that. Like, mind you, there's three views we haven't seen yet on Krakow yet. What was it? I haven't seen Mora. She's hidden underneath the. Yeah. Haven't seen Legion. Yeah. And now for nothing, we haven't seen. God damn it, the name escaped me. God damn it. Oh, God. Hold on. 
Sorry. You haven't seen Cassandra Nova yet. No, we haven't. Those are three powerful mutants that we have not seen yet on Krakoa. Just really impressed that it took a sip, came right to him. Good. I, I mean, you know, it's life. You, know, I, you, know. you always make fun of me for that, but you see how it works. <sighs> Just saying. Oh, my nuts. Yeah. Oh. Shift to the left so you can get it right. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. So, I want to segue from that. Go for it. From because I, I have no idea what's going on with anything X. I know, I know. That's right. Oh, so I know. Uh, the 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 trade is now available. Yes. Um, they, they combine the omnibus is the omnibus. Out, yeah, yeah, they all combine it. It's all available now. All platforms. Your local comic book stores go there first. And if you're too lazy and too much of a sorry, too much of a bitch to go outside, then you can order online. But go to your local comic shops first. Mm -hmm. If you need more, shout out to anyone comics. Bye, bye. I read Marvel's Incoming, and, like, I asked Ramon ahead of time, I was like, yo, is, is this going to make me mad? He's like, nah, it's cool to see what's going on with all the different characters, and I was like, okay, cool. And I forgot that was, about that one part. That was a blatant lie. <laughs> I, 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 There's a lot, I forgot. By about the... midway through, I was angry reading, and I couldn't get out of that. Uh, -huh. uh there... It was an interesting concept, I will say this, to see, like, there was a problem that had to be dealt with, and each superhero who was brought in, it was like, oh, uh, this problem can be best dealt with by Daredevil. Let's go get Daredevil. Oh, Daredevil's like, ah, you know what, uh, this involves this, uh, really crazy-ass computer code, uh, let's ask Tony Stark, where the hell is Tony Stark, we don't know. But also, look, there's a Hala symbol. Let's go get Captain Marvel. And Captain Marvel's like, oh, well, if we don't have Tony Stark, let's go get some other smart motherfucker. Let's go get Blue Marvel. And it, as you can see, it just leads from one hero to another, to another, to another. And that was interesting. That part was cool. Okay? That said, it was a brief glimpse through the entire Marvel Universe mm -hmm. in current storylines. That's not cool. And it reminded me why I mostly read uh, Image, IDW, and Dark Horse, and other independent stuff. This was fucking painful. This was painful. This, just trying to understand where people are coming from. Fucking Nova's in the Cancerverse. Fucking, no, not anymore. He's out. Okay, whatever. He's out. He died. Ooh. Annihilus brought him back. Who the, what the fuck is going on? Uh... All sorts of nonsensical nonsense. Miles Morales gets some help from Spider-Man, getting some people off of a bridge, and then there's some problems with the agents of Atlas and all those people running around Asia, and all of this kind of crazy shit, and Mr. Sinister's watching TV, and all the while plotting with clones to make a better, more improved clone, because he's a dick and he can't just accept the fact that life is good for mutants, so shut the fuck up. Fucking Nathaniel. Shut the fuck up, Nathaniel. You know he's a clone himself, right? I understand that. I got I extrapolated that he's a from what I was reading. I get it. A copy. Shout to Nine Inch Nails if you know that song. Thank you. Then we finally find Iron Man. We finally find Iron Man. And it's <laughs> not Tony Stark. It's Arno Stark. First of all, Arno Stark. Arno Stark. We have Anthony Stark and Arno Stark. Arno Stark sounds like he should be riding the short bus to school with a fucking helmet on. What the fuck kind of name is Arno Stark? What fucking creative team of assholes, of intelligent fucking misfits, intellectual fucking dwarfs, made up the name and concept of Arno Stark? You they should fucking be fired. They should never work in the industry again. Their entire family should die in a fiery car wreck while they, in a fit of depression from being fired and losing their entire family, f just resort to heroin while they live in a box underneath the Manhattan Bridge fucking just dying of scabies and AIDS because they could never work in the industry again. Arno Stark. 
This storyline should never be continuing. It should have died after several issues like the Clone Saga. This is stupid. Take a deep breath. Make sure you just subscribe to Peace Basement uh, via uh, Instagram, t uh, Facebook, yeah, um, YouTube, and Twitter. Also, uh, make sure you follow our, you know, all our streamers things on, you know, Patreon and also on our represent.com where we have both of our merchandise between shirts, t-shirts, hoodies, yada, 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 and also, exhale. Whew, appreciate that. Thank you. All right. So, first thing first. Yeah. How you feeling? I'm okay now. Okay, good. I think I'm okay. That was a great. I had to get that out. That was a great rant. That Thank was, you. That was a great rant. <laughs> that was a great rant. Oh, that was a great rant. I just... I, just, I can't believe... I thought that storyline died a long time ago. And Ramon, in his infinite wisdom, chose not to tell me about it. I forgot about it. See? That's the point. Everybody forgot about it because why? it's stupid. And the fact is, when... Let, let's, just, let's just examine this. I, I, I promise I'll be calm now. When was the last time Iron Man was a top fucking tier selling book? A long time ago. Maybe around 2008 when the movie came out. But now, we've got Arno Stark, and where is it? At number, like, 40 or 50 on the charts? What do you think that is, Marvel? What do you think that is? Because people see an Avengers movie, and they turn to the comics, and they want to see Tony Stark. Instead, they've got his tardo fucking brother, Arno. Arno! You promised it would be fun. I did. I, that, I lied. I'm so, I failed you. I know. I, I have failed you. I, I felt it coming. So, first and foremost, who did you for Halloween? Who, who was I for Halloween? I mean, who was you for Comic Con? I was Tony Stark. So you are no Stark. You're welcome, America. Thank you very much. <laughs> Pete's mind is blown. Once again, make sure you subscribe to Pete's Base on hurt. YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, so on and so forth. <laughs> Uh, we have uh, we have our lovely merchandise on represent.com. You can get t-shirts, hoodies. Also on represent.com, VMP's basement, breaking our new stuff, hoodies, and more stuff is on the way. Zen Rockstar? And Zen and Rockstar. Zen, and Zen Rockstar, yes. Zen Rockstar. The newest member of the, of the of party, Zen Rockstar, is on it as well, too. And also, I love you, bud. No, that was good, though. That was good. That hurt, but it was good. <sighs> First when, real when, good when, zinger of the of the new year. When the when when the when the rant started and I heard that, I was like, you know what? I have it. I'm just gonna wait. <laughs> you just you just waiting for your opportunity. Pretty no, much, I understand. Pretty much, pretty much. No, that's that's what you do. Just wait for that knockout shot. I understand, but that 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 got me right back down to earth. That was good. I needed that. What's that? That's it. Uh, incoming is really just a precursor. It's like the annual beforehand issue. Of un yet another event where Hulkling, Hulkling is the bad guy. He's leading a <clears throat> an army, a plethora, if you will, of scrolls and Kree because he's a half breed, and he's leading these people in a war against Earth. Mm -hmm. Did you just call him a half breed? Yeah. I did call him a half breed. You damn right, I fucking called him a half breed. Yeah, I'm Cree Scroll racist. I am. <laughs> Secondly, you broke Greg. Yeah, I did. I'm about to break the internet on this one. They're gonna get oh mad at me God. for this. I'm gonna get letters. Look, you might be fucking. You might be fucking like, like fucking like, fucking Malta cocktail. <laughs> That's your job. Windows. That's your job. I don't give a fuck if the character's gay. The fact that we spent four pages on his relationship sitting on a couch bored the living fuck out of me. There was he no... Down the pace bar. There, it, it took me right out of the story to tell me how much he's in love with this other character who I don't even know. Wiccan. Is that Wiccan? Yeah, it's Wiccan. Thank God I thought it was the hood. I'm like, who the fuck is this idiot? And I don't fucking care. First of all, you're so in love with this dude, and I'm gonna go destroy you and your fucking planet because I'm gonna lead all of my fucking half-breed people to destroy your fucking little blue orb? It's shameless for fucking superheroes. I'm sorry. This was it is! That's exactly... He's right! Shameless for superheroes. That whole fucking...
fucking go, four Mugovich. page shit. Okay, you you want to establish that the cat just in case nobody knows that Hulkling is gay. Like here's a page worth of him with his boyfriend. Fine. Four pages was overdone. It was. And it not especially when it's, all the stories are like four to five pages max. It took you right. It takes you out of the story. In that, okay, you're trying to humanize this character in a way that is not apparent to the reader at this point. Mm -hmm. You're trying to put him in a relationship that humanizes him because he's essentially an alien. Uh, and then at the end, you turn around, flip the script, and he's the fucking big bad who's leading this entire army against the planet. When, oh, but wait, we just saw he loves the planet, he loves a person on the planet. Why? It's, it, it does, there's no payoff for that. There's no payoff for the story. It, the whole fucking issue failed miserably. It was like okay, Marvel that, that, that. is nothing but a fucking kid with an ant farm, and I like to do this every now and then. See, you got right. I know I'm right. I wish I was wrong! I wouldn't say the issue failed. It wasn't great. It wasn't great. And it's... it's. I think... I was just holding on to one good thing, which they, they kind of showed everything going on and connected everything in a kind of cool way, even though it is It was cool to see no, what all the characters were doing at the same time. And you know who used to do that on the fucking regular? Stan Lee. In the 60s, throughout the entire tenure of his writing fucking career. I mean, they made the comic book queens. They basically made the comic book queens. You knew what was going on in different eras of queens, but yet, you was nowhere near there. That is how you do continuity. Yes, I will agree with that. That's how you're supposed to do it, but Marvel has no concept of actually how to incorporate that into its regular issues. Because cool. They needed a special crossover to say, here's where all of our cats are at. That's it. Nobody cares. I was angry reading halfway through this book. Probably less than that. Upset me. However. Uh, also, I have no interest in whatever the fuck event is coming. Uh, whatever the hell it's called. Yeah. It's not incoming. It, it, it has a name. Oh, the pun. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Empire. Empire with a Y, by the way. Because I don't... I don't get it. Like, are they trying to be fucking, like, West Coast gangster? I don't get it. Why is it with a Y? Why not? I don't... But why? Why? Ah, why? Ah, ah, ah. why? What's the next book? The next book that I want to segue <laughs> into, speaking of Marvel crossovers and whatnot, is Marvel's X. Uh, <sighs> okay, you didn't like this? Who asked for this? Nobody. Nobody. I mean, honestly, who, let's be real. Who asked for Earth X? Nobody. Nobody. So who the hell asked for a prequel ten thousand years later? You put Alex Ross in the name of in the front of it, and the art is not really him. But it's not. It's okay. not. The art's not. The art is not Alex Ross. Let's, <laughs> let's just get that out of the way. But this is a segue between Marvels and Earth X, and I actually did not mind this. This what? One, I really didn't. This is a completely separate story from any of the soup. This is a, a regular kid. Who idolizes superheroes, whose okay. parents the nostalgia and, and like the rest of his uh, his family, they all think that they're going through this mutation phase that this they're in this chrysalis and then they break out of said cocoon mm -hmm. and then they have superpowers. What is that but fucking in humans? Yeah, I guess. So. I, I don't see this as being mutants. If they make, if they actually make this mutants, I'm going to be disappointed because that's not how we get mutants. Mutants just become mutants. Yeah. But the fact that the his grandmother, his sister, his parents got killed inadvertently, and that's unfortunate. His sister and his grandmother went through the chrysalis phase, and they broke out of their cocoons, and all of a sudden they had power. Oh, grandma died. Hey, grandma died. Unfortunately, grandma could not control her shit. Oh, Result, yeah, whatever. Like he has remained human thus far. He has, he has no powers. He's a normie. And he has to deal with an entire town, everyone he has ever known, mm -hmm. having superpowers all the fuck around him, and trying to kind of kill him. Just because they can't. Because they have superpowers. They don't know how to control them. They just want to fucking do some shit. 
And this kid is like, basically at this point, running for his life. His parents are dead, his grandmother's dead, his sister's gone, off having fucking crazy ass flying fire powers. And he's going to New York with a trucker who looks a lot like old man Hawkeye. I enjoyed this book way more than I thought I was going to. I did it. It was okay. It was okay. That's it. Uh, I'm not loving like you are about. It's okay. It was okay. It was cute. Okay. Yeah, no, I I did not think I was going to enjoy this. And I think going into that, I think I thought I was going to like Incoming, and I didn't. And I thought I was going to dislike this, and I didn't. And I think that's where the, the change takes place. Okay. <clears throat> So while we're talking about the future and uh, what the fuck is going on, let's talk about Miles Morales, The End. I did not like this. It was horrible. It was it's horrendous. It's unnecessary. That they've done some The End stories. They did The Punisher, which was really dark. They did The Hulk, which was darker still. The greatest one they ever did. The, the Hulk was fucking warping with the bugs that killed him every day. Uh. Oh man, that's fucked up. The Punisher got skin cancer with from nuclear fucking fallout and his fucking face was falling off. That's fucked up. This one was boring. The artwork was too busy and complicated. And nothing really happened. All he did was def he fought one fight, like one stellar fight, which wasn't all that stellar, and you died. The problem with this is Miles Morales hasn't had a good enough beginning to have an end. Exactly. That's wow. my that's my biggest beat. They haven't really done shit with him. At all. They throw that's him profound. with the champions and have him running around in the background. He's fighting 2.0. The best thing that happened to Miles Morales was fucking Secret War. When they combined the universes. Yes. 100%. Because now he's in the regular universe and you see him not only in Incoming when he teams up with well, Peter Parker Spider-Man for a mm -hmm. page or two but, you know, they, they make reference to a lot of that in this issue when uh, his his niece, Ganky's daughter, mm -hmm. was like, oh, you know, how come you and Kamala Khan never, you know, mm -hmm. bumped uglies? And he's like, ah, oh, well, you know, it wasn't like that. Well, no, it should have been. So, there you go. Bad he she did get him. And vice versa. I'm just saying. That's the one thing that actually got right in the top of the book, but... Chemistry was already there and the respect was already and, there. And, I mean, in Champions, you did see it. You do see it on a constant basis. So, it just, this book fell so short for me. And I like the artwork. I don't like the artwork on this book, if that makes sense. It was busy. It was too lighthearted. This book should oh, yeah, have been no. darker. Especially for, like, Killer Germs. And yeah. This, this the Killer game. Germs, and they looked like fucking, uh, they looked like the last boss Abyss of Marvel vs. Capcom 2. Oh, wow. Which yeah. was not a fucking good last boss to begin with. And it was stupid looking. You want to talk about, like, germs and shit? Like, make some germs. Honestly, why wasn't it the Venom symbiote? Why wasn't the Venom Listen, symbiote taking I'm, over I'm everything? I'm sick and tired of Venom. Alright. Everywhere you go, there's some symbiote and shit like that. It's, 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 I know. understand that, but, I mean, it would have worked in this scenario. Alright. Let's go back up to before the new year. Dark Horses, Our Encounters with Evil, The Adventures of Professor J.T. Meinhardt and His Assistant, Mr. Knox. It's a long-ass title. It is. By Warwick Johnson Cadwell. Both art and story. I just want to check that out. I didn't read it because of the title. I'm going to be very... No, no. This is bad long? Just to confirm Publishers need to be aware of this. There are a lot of shit that will get fans to back away from shit. Long ass titles is one of those things. Crappy covers, uh, quality paper. It's not just, oh, I have a great story. No, that was a lot. Give me the title this long, just type that shit into my list every week. No. The I'll, question we I'll get. I'll the title longer than my dick. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the question we get a lot is can good art save a bad story? And the answer is yes, it can. Uh, you can very much enjoy the art of a mediocre story. A really bad story? Maybe not. Can a great story save mediocre or bad art? Yes. Absolutely. I think I'm more inclined to stay with a comic because of a good story versus uh, mediocre art, and that is this one. The art is just basura. The, the art is... Garbage. Second grade-ish. It's, yeah. It's, the stories are fantastic. The stories are good. Oh, my God. 
Yeah. You know who lucked this? Um, he was here, Sherbert. Oh, oh, Sherbert. Oh, uh, the Superman. Yeah. 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 He has monsters. Yes. Oh, oh, he, he would love this book because it's it screams all these vampires and monsters. And it's just it's really good in that sense. But the art is like, eh. it's a fucking fun ass story. Yes. So it's all yeah. The, the, it's a whole anthology of stories that all kind of seem to tie into one by the end. And it's very Mike Mignola. It's very oh, Hellboyish, yeah, yeah. so it fits right into that uh, that trope. Mm -hmm. The artwork tries to be very simplistic Mike Mignola, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. comes up short mm -hmm. yeah. too often. I mean, honestly, even his art I'm only taking small doses. I agree with that. And this is a very long book too. It's a, it's like double or triple oh, size. Oh, it is a fat ass book. You get your money's worth for you do. sure. But and it is good. It the you know, this I can't say it. The stories you're right are fucking good. They are interesting. They keep you going, and even with the art, like you see where the guy was trying to go with it, mm -hmm. and I'm like, okay, you just don't have a skill for that. Okay, you you know you couldn't quite deliver. I get it, mm -hmm. but should that detract you from? Picking this up and reading it, I don't, I don't think, so. think so. I think it's good. I think it's a good story, and I think it deserves to be read. I agree. You know, I after a while, I dare I say I got used to it. You know, yeah, you do. Yeah, okay, yeah, uh -huh. yeah. And I'm like, all right, let me. I want to hear the story, like, because by this time I'm invested in the characters. I like them. Mm -hmm. Like they're likable fucking people. Yeah. You know, they're monster hunters, but they're also mm, kind of inept. Yeah. The dipshits. So even that monster, that werewolf who happens to be a hunter. Yeah. I was like, oh. I felt bad for right? him, yo. It, it, it's really, really And good it didn't song. hammer it home until you seen him dead. And, and then you see his fucking family in the next panel reading his journal like, ow. Fuck. Yeah. It's a good fucking story. It is. It is. Uh, side note, I have, a, I have a response to your rant. Tom DeFalco, Herbie Tripp. Karen Gillian and Dale Eaglesham came up with Arnold Stark. Well. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Greg. Thank you. That was from Rugged Lord. Be blessed. Thank you, Rugged Lord. Tom so, Falco was in there? Yes. I like Tom. I do. Yeah, well, next I don't want to wish bad at him. I don't. So I can't even say, like, you should get diarrhea. So that's how... That's how that's right, Maybe a little logic. I want to talk to him now. Like, dude, what fuck's on your mind? Like, and I'll ask him that straight up. I know you will. Yeah. He'll ask me if I've ever moved out of the basement. The answer's ah. gonna sort of. <laughs> you know, it, it happens. We had a fantastic interview with Tom DeFalco several years back at NYCC. Uh, you can search that, and it's just, it's it's just awesome. It's Tom DeFalco and Jam DeMathis. It's it's great. Mm. It's one of our Peace Basement shining moments. Oh, Jam. Jam. IDW's The Kill Lock. I like this a lot. I like this. Damn it, I'm so ready. Yeah, this is good. Oh, so, man. you've got four robots, each of a different class. It's oh, almost yes. like, like an RPG with robots. Except the robots are all assholes. One of them, holy fuck! This dude, the like, engineer? Uh, yeah, the you engineer. can't talk anymore. Yeah, he's an engineer robot, and he's a real douche. And he's like, I built you, and I can't believe what like they did to my design. You're ugly. I, I don't like you. And he just shuts him down. Like, boop, I just hit a button. You can't talk anymore, ever. So he's the wife from the office? He's a dick. I hope he fucking dies, but... I'm also really rooting for all the other characters who I don't want to die, but if one of them dies, they all die because of a fucking cursed programming that they have because they were basically sentenced to death uh, for crimes that... A weird should, death. A weird death. They're, they're kill-locked. Mm -hmm. If one dies, they all die. Nice. But if they, if they all manage to live, they can live. This is the way. So they all have to basically hang out together, and they're all different. Yes. That huge robot, which is like the a fucking war, 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 war. Yeah. Yeah. He's awesome. Yeah, I didn't like him. Ah, uh, you knew I would. Yeah. 
He was like an ex-soldier. This the, there's a young kid robot who's just like a fledgling. He doesn't know anything. He just doesn't like remember innocent. anything. Yeah. Just like stuff like this was so fucking fun, and you immediately, within what twenty eight pages, you get a feel for who all of these characters are. Yeah. This is how you introduce a fucking story, and not only are you introducing a story, but you're introducing a story. That has nothing... There's not a human element in there. Mm. This is all robotics. Which, okay, you have you have human-esque qualities, you know? Mm -hmm. But at no point could you pull this off with, a, with humans in the story because humans can't be, you know, kill-locked like this. Like, you can't say, well, if one dies, you all die because of what? Like a genetic virus or something? No. They're robots and it's in their programming. They've now been programmed with this virus thing that if fucking one of them dies, however, whether they're right next to each other or 20 light years away, one dies, they fucking all die. And some of them you're rooting for and some of them are dicks. It's good. It's good. I read a Valiant book. Bastard. I did. The Visitor. What do you thought of it? I liked it. Even though they it, don't show this guy at even all? Even though they have, there's no explanation whatsoever. There is nothing about what's actually happening in this book. So the Japs created this weapon that's sick. That could not only save Japan, yeah. but also decimate America. Yes. Whether we're talking economy, physically, whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, if they are allowed to continue this research, Japan gets saved, U.S. is fucked. Mm -hmm. And somebody knows about this mm -hmm. and is trying real hard to kill him. All of them. Yeah, it's good. I like it. I like the characters. Yep. I like um, the asshole um, jab officer, the blonde one who's a douche. I like all the New York stuff. I like the, the 59th Street Bridge, the fucking yeah. cutting of the cable car, mm -hmm. the, the whole thing on Roosevelt Island. I like a lot of this book. Yeah. I wish that this was double-sized because I, I wanted more out of the first issue. Yeah. I wanted to know who the fuck is following them. And I hope they don't make me wait like seven issues before they tell me. No, I don't think they're going to do that. Oh my ass. This was good shit. It was, I agree. Well drawn to, mm -hmm. uh, great backgrounds. You really felt the the scenery of, of New York City. Mm -hmm. You felt like you were in there. Valiant does good shit when they stop um, connecting everything together. Right, and that's what's intimidating to me because... I'm not in the Valiant universe. Yeah. You, as much as you've tried, I, 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 I've slept on it, and now I think it's too late for me. I'm ready to wave the white flag, because I'm sick and tired of, like, every year, Volume 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Yeah, it's, it's too much. Constant re redo. But if they go, like, the, the Image or IDW or other independent mm -hmm. comics routes, where you're just making a good story f with... This is the story, it's contained within here, and you have, let's say, four, six, eight, twelve, I don't care if it's twenty-five issues. Tell me a story within this. I agree. This was good. This is absolutely worth your time. IDWs, I can sell you a body. I like this. I enjoyed it a lot. You know I did because it's ghosts and shit. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it, it is a medium who can actually talk to ghosts, this is his legitimate power. And he's bastardized it. He's used it for profit. He's, he's used not it making for, a profit. He's real. He has no concept of how to make an actual profit off of this. And apparently, he can use this power to, to collect a ghost and put it into another body. So is he Italian from Long Island or Russian from? Well, it's funny you mention that because he runs afoul of a bunch of Italians, and uh, they. They want him to find the ghost of this mafia boss Sounds and put right. him into a new body. And they paid him a decent amount for this, mm -hmm. and they have not gotten a return yet. There you go. So now they're looking to collect one way or the other. Either you give us back our money, yet. or you give us what we paid for, and then you give us back our money. He's going to die. Yeah. He's going to die. I enjoyed this immensely. I have no idea where it's coming. Me neither. This, this can be a ghost book. This, at this point, can be a zombie book. Mm -hmm. What's fucking happening here? Yeah. There's a lot going on. I don't want to spoil this for you. 
There's a lot of crazy uh, supernatural shit going on. I need to have you step it up the game. This is good. I can sell you a body. Well, you know what, IDW? You can sell me a couple of comic books. I'm in. There you go. Yeah. Uh, qu- uh, Brother Laura has a question. Will you be going over the contest winners tonight or next episode? Oh, no, we're, we're going over those tonight, so uh, stay tuned. Uh, wow, I didn't realize we were this far, we were this deep into the episode, but yeah, we're going yeah, in. Yeah, we're in the rabbit hole, like, motherfucker. Yep. We, we ran a lot. Stay with us. It's the first one of the year, so, like, you no know, be... Yeah, know. we got a lot of shit to cover. Yeah. I didn't get to read this, but what is Star Wars? Like, this is taking place between... It's right after Empire Strikes Back. Yeah. yeah. So, it's Change. just a... Uh, but why is it starting at a number one, and it's just Star Wars number one? Why is it not Because the, the a, last volume was doing a different time. And when was that? I don't remember, because I kind of dropped it. Uh-huh. Yeah. I, I am sick and tired of the rebellion. I don't want nothing to do with no rebellion. The only reason I like this one... It picks up right after Empire, which is the best Star Wars movie, period. Okay. Um, Not mad at that. And it's dealing with Luke just finding out his, his dad who chopped off his hand is his, his dad. dad. And his dad is Sif. And no, he hasn't dealt with that yet. And then she kissed your sister. Yeah. He hasn't dealt with that yet. He's still dealing with the anger of what happened. Anger being a key word. Right. This is actually them dealing I with... I saw that last page. Like, what am I supposed to be? Will Luke start thinking about the dark side of the Force? And considering he lashed out with the Force in anger in this issue... This I'm seems like, like a cool introspective into the character of yes. Luke Skywalker. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I think this would definitely rank a rule of three or even five. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Definitely. I, I fell off the, the Star Wars series. I, 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 I dropped it. It's like, no, stop. I'm surprised you dropped it altogether. I, I'm, I'm, no. The Vader, Aphra, everything else... As long as it just dealt with something besides the, the, the Rebels, mm-hmm. I'm cool. Okay. Well, uh, I, I, I love Vader when freaking uh, uh, Salvador Lorca lo- uh, left. Like, I'm not even going to lie to you. Like, no, I, no. I love Salvador Lorca. Like, I love that dude. Vader kept being good, bro. Oh, God. Like, I mean, Salvador Lorca is, you know, he's good. I love are him. you fucking guys speaking English? What the fuck? Salvador you... Lorca is, is an artist. Um, oh. X Men. I thought that was a Star Wars thing. No, no. Invincible it's, Iron Man. Extreme X Men. That's yeah. not first man. Yeah. Oh, oh my God. God. Oh. The stream action. Oh. The costume. The Google app. The, the oh. Oh. <clears throat> A robe that could call upon all the powers yeah, he's ever touched upon. like Salvador La Roca. Like, like, did he shoot Greedo from the side? What the Salvador La Roca. Yeah. Now, I now I can hear it. Uh, it was as easy. soon as you said Italian, I was like, all right, start extrapolating the syllables. I extrapolating. S- Good word. I swear I by the Vader books. I know, you, you always did. You always did. I read them right away. Not in alphabetical order. Just that's the first book I read when it comes out. All right. Wow, Which, you break you break your rule? I break my OCD and... Wow! Just, that's when I know like, you really like something. No, 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 no. Like, fuck you. Like, you actually made me triple down my OCD, but I cannot read a book until I read it in the order. Uh, question. Uh, did you get to Rise of Kylo Ren? For yes, you? I did. And thoughts? I'm okay with it. I don't know what's going to happen. After episode nine, yes, I'm referring to it as episode nine. Cheese, just in case. Uh, I mean, you should have saw. You know, like they made the Knights of Ren look like bitches. They're like cheesy barbarian swords from like Conan and Arnold days. It was like these are the Knights of Ren, dude. They were the Jackson without Michael Jackson. Like it, it made no sense. It was. It was like so. Now you give me this comic book where I'm. I'm. I'm in. I'm interested. I want to know the backstory. And in that book, they they pretty much said. The, the scars Snoke has that was Luke that did that to him mm. so I'm like bitches don't just tease me a little bit tell me more but meanwhile they're giving the, the Wrens and it so, turns out that the Knights of Ren were there before Kylo so he didn't form them okay so I'm like oh okay okay so he just took upon their names like Kylo Ren he went to them after he actually at a pretty young age right after he um burned down the temple and left his uncle See, now, I have heard rumor that there is the possibility of a Kylo Ren prequel series starring Adam Driver. Yeah, and that'd be a horrible idea. I, I actually, would actually be all for it. I, I, I'll sign up on because that. Because I want to see what's happening. I will sign up on Even that. Even if, at this point, like, and I said this during our Pete's Basement review of Star Wars Episode Nine: Rise of Skywalker and The Mandalorian. It was myself, Rocco, and Cheese. And we had a lot of fun for an hour and a half, so if you haven't caught that, 
Make sure you go on PeachBasement.com or on YouTube and check that out on the channel and let us know what you think of our overall Star Wars review of 2019. It was the last video that we put out for 2019. But that said, uh, it even if, let's say, they don't do a live-action series, mm -hmm. the whole mess of... 789? Yes. Could be... Ex explained, uh, contained, whatever word you want to use, with a well placed and well done animated series. The Clone Wars. Yes. That's what the Clone yes. Wars is for one, two, and three. Exactly. Three what? more weeks, motherfuckers. We three need more weeks. That's what's coming out. Three February. more weeks, motherfuckers. <coughs> three more fucking weeks. Season seven. We need another Clone Wars, so to speak, uh, metaphorically speaking, four, seven, eight, nine. Kind of like also Rebels. I mean, the Star Three Wars more fucking weeks. The I Star Wars fucking animated wait. stuff cleans up the crap Lucas slash Disney has done. Right. Wonderfully so. I haven't seen Resistance yet. <laughs> I'm waiting so I can just binge it and just like see if it's worth it. Because if I go to this week to week stuff, I'm gonna go crazy. Mm -hmm. But yes, I what? swear by Clone, again. Clone Wars is comparable to Batman the Animated Series. Is it? You know what? I I've heard. I ain't mad at that at all. That's, that's it. That's it's like it's like if you want to put on the up up echelon like fucking like like cartoon lore. I've heard like the top good. five for me personally. Global Tech number one. Okay. Like the first time I saw people die on purpose on the show. Global Tech is kind of sacred though. In the <laughs> community. No, no, no. We're not like like, like yeah. literally like Muffins was dying on that shit. Yeah. Like, like literally they were killing main characters. Good job by you. So well, I, I admit I was uh, dissuaded. With Marvel's events, what is tarot? That's horrible. Yeah, that's it. That's really it. Ooh. It has Diablo. Diablo, the Fantastic Four. Bro. Yes, yeah. yeah. He has some kind of energy. He's making tarot cards to control Avengers slash defend. Uh, blah. I'm not even giving you two, three issues. Yeah, moving on. That's it. That's it. They made a big ass deal out of this. Of course they did. Because they want to push these characters and shit. And that's stupid. I mean, this. Yeah, no, no. This is not a villain, a German there. And, and I'd rather see that myself <laughs> in a summer rain mm. in fucking Louisiana. Fair. Mm. In, fucking, in fucking August. Oh, damn. On purpose. There's a lot of self hate right there. Yeah. Then read this book. Wow. No, it, 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 it was like. Swamp ass included. It was very unnecessary. It's more necessary than incoming. Wow. That's, yes, yes, yes. I'm glad yes, I yes, fucking skipped it. Yeah, no, this is like really. Could you imagine the rant that if, I, if I read it? It wouldn't be an episode. It'd be just a rant. Thor, issue one. Now, I read this. I wanted to hate this so bad. Mm. Why do you want to hate it? All right, look. I've had it up to here with Gore. Okay. And then Gore and ended... Gore's not in this. Yeah. And then two weeks later, you have another volume. Like, can you wait a month? There should be some time. You should just wait. Let me Sorry. breathe. Let me take in what the hell just happened with Gore and all this stuff and the stuff you haven't touched yet. Yeah, your I bastards. have no idea. I'm glad you said that because I have no idea what you're talking about with Gore because I've said I haven't in the last Thor. The series. last Thor was actually King Thor, which takes place billions of years in the future, right? Where everybody's dead and Thor has kind of restarted human civilization on Earth. See, on human this is while it is kind of a good jumping on point. Yeah. Like I, I got it and I was into the story. Mm -hmm. They're, they're mentioning a lot of things that I have no clue what's happening. Where's Hendale? Is he dead? Why is Sif the all-seeing yeah, girl? Him, him to die. What, what happened to Odin? Sif Where's is Odin? Why is Odin stepped down. Odin he, just he's, he's raising a new baby. This is what new baby? Who the fuck? This all took Sif place. Sif is a Hendale's lot, sister? It's a, lot, it's a lot going on. What it's is even happening? On. This all takes place after War of Worlds. Loki's the fucking king of the frost giants? He, he I can't his, even he keep up father. with this stuff. I can't keep up with this stuff. Okay, so This is all crazy. You thought, you thought fucking being, being an X-Men fan was hard. This is a, yeah, this is all no, ridiculous. Yeah, no. I can't even... Thor. First of all, okay, here's my next gripe. Thank you for fucking saying that. Fucking talk about being an X-Man is hard and everything, and you talk about fucking Thor issue one with its nine... Thousand variant covers. Yes. Okay. Uh, there is a very significant correlation between Thor and the Silver Surfer in this issue. Yes. Would you or would you not agree with me? Yes. 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 Now, we have 
myriad varying covers from yes. art germ to fucking oh jeez oh, yeah. 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 do you yeah. I, I do you yeah. where am I going no, I where know, am I, I going there's a certain going. cover that should have been read there is a certain fucking no, cover yeah. that should have been a mod and it wasn't now. why wasn't Silver Surfer issue 4 redone for this variant cover because Look. the surprise in the end bullshit it they, they redid other covers for this. That should have been done. They could have redone Thor in Ooh. his fucking ending outfit and Silver Surfer in the black, which I don't even fucking know because I didn't read that horrendously drawn series. That's a lot, too. It, fuck that. That was everything. All right, so. <coughs> I'm dying. The water. Unless you want to fucking make this a four-issue series and that's the cover to issue four. That's the only way I accept All right, this. So, so there's a lot to take. Okay, I'll be, I, I, I just have that too. Coming later on, I'll go for it actually. There's a lot. There's a lot to take in there. So I'm gonna address things as I see. Now, right. only true Marvel fans know what the fuck I was just raving about. Yeah. All right. So, <sighs> so four. The, and Silver Surfer have an epic cover on Silver Surfer issue four, and it should have been redone as a variant for this issue. That's all I'm gonna say. Right. By anybody who can. Knowing your luck, it would be by Del Otto and you had to struggle to find it. By no, with, really. Knowing my luck, it would be by Rob Liefeld. <laughs> That's mean, man. Who well, is just triangles on the rainbow bridge. It's mean to us. Yeah, I know. You were saying, I'm sorry. No, we got uh, So, number one, I hear all your gripes and agree with the majority of them. Especially the variant cover. My biggest beef for this book. Because I love the book. I did too. And I, and like, for those who don't know, we have a group chat among us <laughs> on the regular. It should never be shown on any time of screen. But never, 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 when never. I read this shit, the first thing I said is, this book is amazing. Goddamn the last two pages. I, I... You didn't like the last two pages? No. I did. No. No. Why not? Because you gentrified... Sorry, cheese. You gentrified Thor. <laughs> oh, you mean the looks, the visuals? Yeah. No, no. He was... You saw Archie Discover? They tried to. He looks too fucking pretty. They gentrified Thor. He should be walking a freaking... Uh, his, na his name is Thor. He makes fucking lattes and fucking Bushwick. <laughs> okay. okay. It only works from from 7 to 8. Do you remember the glow-in-the-dark Tron in the covers from yes. a while back? Yes. That's exactly what they did to him. They Troned him. I was so fucking... I was so fucking pissed. So Yo, you want to tell people why? Yeah, you? let's just throw the cheese down right now. Oh Galactus oh. falls to Asgard, and he is telling them that the Black Winter is coming. And I'm sorry, it's not supposed to be a racist thing. It's just it's no, the Black Winter. Winter. Yeah, I, I, I guess. Oh, well. And one this one, is one and a half, what arm and a half? Well, well, arm and arm. And a, yeah, he did. Like the Galactus yeah. got a fucking nub. Arm and a half. And uh, this is what killed G Galen's universe the first time around, mm -hmm. and now he has survived it a second time by staring him in the face and being blown across the cosmos. But he has come here not seeking asylum. Thor calls all of the heralds to a meeting from Nova to Terax to people I don't know. To Terax wasn't in the droid. That was not Terax? No, that was fucking what? No. Korg. Uh, Korg? Borg? That was Korg. Was Korg. Um, There's that weird Stardust one, I think. They're like a fish. Nova. Oh, Korg, Meek, Meek, no, Meek was there. Who? They had Meek in the background. It was fucking, um, who else was it? Um, I don't know any of these motherfuckers. I thought that shit was Terax. Two of the Warriors Three. They look alike. Um, there was mad, like, there was mad people, fucking both Galactic and also, like, fucking Ice Guardian. Oh, shit. Yo, what is, like, what even happened in Silver Surfer Black that this motherfucker is not chrome no more? He's black. I don't know. I don't know either because I'm too why? Drunk to, I just drove to recite that. I He's also very transparent hated the, time. the fucking artwork on that series. It was horrible. I can't possibly read it because it it just I, it offends my optic nerves. I I did not like the artwork and I can't read it for that. So so anyway, okay. Galactus comes. He's like, look, I got this problem. It's coming, and. What last time I faced it, it showed me my fear of how I'm gonna die, which was the end of the universe. This time when I faced it, it showed me my, my, my what I'm gonna die again by, and it showed me Thor. So I'm here to let's see you're helping this. Then afterwards, we're gonna have words. 
And then, all right, so like, okay, let's go. All of Asgard's gonna go and f help feed Galactus and rescue anybody off those planets because, you know, Galactus kills planets, you know. And but Galactus has to feed on these these particular planets he that beat. will, like, oh. supercharge him. Yes. But they're also inhabited, so the Asgardians are coming to get everyone off-world and then Galactus to feed in order for him to stop the Black Winter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool, I'm with it. So, the guy is like, no, wait. Um, Soul Surfer offers, okay, let me lead you to them. He's like, no, you're not. It's going to be Thor. And next you know, he just zaps Thor with his huge muscle And we on. thought he killed him. Yeah. We thought he killed him for like two pages. Yeah. So and then all of a sudden, with... he's glowing and shit, and he is the, the herald of thunder. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's glowing and shit with fucking the theme song of fucking Dream Mover in the background and shit. It's like, it's fucking horrible. Oh, I heard ACDC. I heard Dream Weaver. Thunder! No, no, I heard. Thunder, I believe in you. Oh no. my God, it's horrible. It's horrible. The one Thunder. good thing about this horrible. is, Thunder. how dare you? That, uh, that's what I. I heard. think Thor needed a new look. I'm not exactly a fan of his new look, the costume wise. Mm -hmm. I'm not exactly a fan of it, but it'll grow on me. The fact that it's a room, that's cool. I wanna judge. I wanna judge him in a billabong. That's a store. Look it up. Or a Hollister. Or or Abercrombie and Bitch, <laughs> or fucking or fucking H and M. I love the or fact Uniqlo. that it healed his eye and um, pick a store. Yes, I wasn't a fan of him looking like his father. No, I know that was ridiculous. That was too soon. Why did that happen? What? Why did that even happen? I mean, King Thor, I get it. That was like some shit from. No, but King Thor, I get Thor in the far future. Oh, by I the way, but, yeah. uh, going back, speed of Thor and incoming, we've got Jane Foster just being a regular doctor again because cancer's curable. Yeah, no, she should be fucking dead. Well, she went to chemo and stuff. Well, yeah, but that doesn't work. And uh, she, I mean, she, she, she was Thor, and like she was like as a guardian, and she yada yada yada, and like you know. And she works in a mortuary. She and should Valkyrie, be and fucking dead. Valkyrie got canceled, so that's you know what you're human again. God bless. That's basically what they did. I like this story, I do. and I want to see. Where I love the going. story too, but like the last two pages piss me the fuck off. I'm, How powerful is Thor? Because Thor question. has a Thor force, because it used to be the Odin force when I was Thor right. force. He was willing to fight Galactus. Yeah. And he kind of fucked him up, like, just for a yeah. shot. And he and had a ball like, to Yo, Neil. Stop, please. He pulled a Zod line yeah. from Neil. Yeah, Neil. He pulled a Franklin Richards. Neil. So. He told Galactus. It's like he's an actual god. He's an there's actual only one guy that ever sunned Galactus, and that was Franklin Richards. Facts. Galactus and Odin did fight once. It was, all, it was pretty much a draw. Yeah. So, no, Thor has the same power, plus the power cosmic. But this is also Galactus wanting his help, so maybe, like, I don't want to fuck your simple ass up. Also, right he now. was thumpy, too. Yeah. So, he got fucked up at this point. That's like kicking him up <laughs> down. What? You know what I'm saying? But Lord said, maybe she just ate one of the golden apples and had cancer cured. <laughs> you know what? I'll fucking accept that. I'll fucking I accept that. She's I'll been fuck. avoiding magical solutions all the time. But the only solution is a magical <laughs> solution. There's no uh, fucking real world solution. Oh, uh, that's good. That's good shit. Well Dude, done, sir. in remission for a while. Well, fuck well, that shit. Remission for sort of remission. <clears throat> Thor is really powerful. I'm with this book. And you're going to fight like another it. big cosmic baddie. And yeah, I'm no, with it. The book was great. Yep. Some of the last two pages, I was so fucking pissed. Like... Motherfucker, where's the fucking Wegmans? Who the fuck is this? It's not my Thor. <laughs> fuck my Thor, hashtag not my Thor. Thor. <laughs> not my Thor. Not my Thor. <laughs> yeah, start that. That's not racist. Not my Thor. Hashtag. Right, I'm yeah. with you. I'm with you. Let's jump to this week. God damn it. We've got Antarctic's badass. Yeah. 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 I thought this was really cool until like. With that, now we're dealing with the extraterrestrial super heroine. Thing. I actually like her. I like the design of her. She's big and broad looking thick and just. She's a female lobo. That's what she is. But and but then. Yeah, that's someone from freaking Greenpoint. And then, like, what? All of a sudden, this thing survived? <laughs> like, this this creature? Yeah. It was a bit much. And the art. Uh... The black. Okay, artwork wise. The black and white was cool with the hints of color that's like the blood. No, or like, so, yeah. yeah. What, where it was necessary. I like the blood, the like the addition of color where necessary. Okay. That said, I was bored with the story. Yeah, no, it's boring. Yeah. It's, 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 yeah. Right, like I, I'll try. I'll give it the rule of three just to see what's happening here. Like where, 
are we going with this hero who lived and, you know, had the symbiote attack him? That's basically what it is. It's a symbiote. Mm -hmm. And, like, now the symbiote that inhabited your friend that you thought your friend was dead and the symbiote's dead but it's still alive because it's probably being kept as some sort of weapon. Where are we going with this? Oh, no. I'll bite. So let, let's find out. Yo, what what was this uh, Stranger Things Into the Fire? Is this like a side story? Where it's we a it's a technically a continuation of a side story. This is the second volume. It's not your one friendly. Okay. Um. All right, we know about eleven, right? Yeah. That's a number. There was at least eleven of them. Right. Let's talk about other ones. Some of them escaped. Okay. And what's going on with them and whatnot, and some of their powers and. So on and so See, forth. these are things that I think should have been explored in future episodes of the series itself, or even in a side series. I think a spin-off show would yeah. have been better, yeah. I think a spin-off show of a one-shot of each of the other numbers would have been ideal. Yeah. Maybe. I'd have watched it. Maybe and it I, think it would, I think it would have sated people's appetites toward, you know, what's, co what's coming in the future. Because, let's face it, they're going to run out of time with these kids. They're aging. They're fucking teenagers, and you're taking your dear old sweet time between series, you know, two, three years. They're going to be fucking 35 before you finish. So this also, they're last moving into movies. Right. Yeah. So it's going to be expensive to have them. It's basically the last season of the show. So, you know, that's a wrap of that. Like, right, so where the fuck are you going? I mean, look at David Harbour. David Harbour got two fucking bad movies and got made major bank for that shit. And I still haven't seen those. I got Hellboy coming from Netflix real quick. You'll be all right. You'll be all right. Mm-hmm. Oh, you know, that good, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's wasted potential. That's the best thing. That's the best thing I can say about that Hubble movie. That's you know, you ever, ever went to the bathroom to take a shit and like you didn't realize that you have no toilet paper? Hmm. That's Hellboy. That's awful. That's how hopeless you feel. That's terrible. What is uh DC, DC's Daphne Byrne? This is another Hill House book. I, I enjoyed this. I like the art. You didn't like it? At all, no. Really, why? There's an artist that this reminds me of. He used to do a lot of stuff in Dark Horse. Okay. I didn't care for Dan either. This is the same kind of style. I forget his name. Kelly Jones. Is it him? Yeah, I'm looking right at it. You I'm got sure. the name he's, right he's, here. He's the same guy that did in the Dark Horse books. You uh -huh. used to like reading? I I enjoyed this. I, I, I didn't, did not like I the didn't art. mind no, the art at all. Is the same Kelly Jones used to do the Ains for fucking Sam Keeve did the Max? Could, could be. No, it doesn't, doesn't strike as the same kind of artwork. I don't know. I mean, maybe it is, but maybe okay. he changed his style. I'm not sure. I actually didn't read a lot of the Max. I back love then. the fucking Max. Oh God. I enjoyed this book. Uh, I, enjoyed I enjoyed the, the story. natural aspect of it. Uh, the the style of art did not bother me at all. It didn't yeah, take me out of the seen story. This art before, it? it, you know, it was uh, it was semi realistic to, you know, to accommodate the story to accompany it. And it was basically this girl who is attuned to the supernatural uh, and is trying to figure out exactly how, all the while dealing with the death of her father and her mom is not dealing with that too well. And, you know, where, where the powers that be can go from there. Like, her mom has enlisted the aid of a, a false medium. And she figures it out, and she's like, yo, she's fucking robbing you. Like, I just, uh, I just made up some stories, and she corroborated on yep. it. Like, she's fucking robbing you. How much are you paying for this? We can't afford this. And meanwhile, like, it seems like, if not her father, some sort of devilry is trying to talk to her. Mm -hmm. Yep. At this point, I think it's safe to say, at least for me, and correct me if I'm wrong as far as uh, you go, but any of the Joe Hill, Hill House Productions books, I'm in for at least three. Oh, whatever yeah. the fuck yeah, they he's, are. Uh, he's done that right. He's done that right. Yeah. yeah. I like, whatever you're doing, I'm going to check out mm -hmm. at this point. Yeah. Even if you're not the, the main architect of it, as long as it's got your label on it, you deem it good enough to be a Hill House comic, I'm with it. Because, so far, he has told some of the best horror comics I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. in, in the modern industry. Short of, like, you know, reading an old school EC. Mm -hmm. This is what this is to me. This is yeah. old school EC, and I'm having so much fun with it. That's what, that's what I need. Yeah. That's, I, God, I can't, there's fucking just so much fun 
with all of the shit that he's putting out. It's great. Loving every goddamn moment of it. Images the clock. Okay. This is all, this, you, you go ahead, take it. You, you, you want me to take it? Yeah, right. Alright, alright. All right. All right. Okay. So you got a virus that is all, it's a, it's a cancer. And it's acting like a virus. Mm -hmm. So it's so catching that they, they don't, like the people in the comic, they, they, they have no concept of how it's spreading. It is spreading like a fucking airborne virus, but it's a fucking cancer. So how can it possibly spread fast, like so. an airborne virus? And once you get it, you've got uh, two weeks to two months to live. Mm. Tops. There's no cure. There's no fucking hope. And this, this dude who is on retreat to fucking save people in this, you know, war-torn, war-long country, all of a sudden gets a call that, hey, your fucking wife's dead because of this cancer that you were trying to cure elsewhere. So he goes back home for the burial, and his daughter, who's, like, it, this was one of the craziest scenes ever for me. Well, she's like, well, Daddy, at least Mommy won't be alone in heaven. The panels. And he's like, why? Because so many... Oh, uh, at least Mommy won't be alone. He's like, what do you mean? Because so many other people are going to heaven, too. And it pans out, and there's mad other people in the cemetery because all of these people are dying of the same cancer. And they start to realize, like, yo, this is an epidemic. This is starting to spread mad quick. And they don't understand why until this one dude, this cloaked dude in a trench coat and a hat, passes this note like she bumps into him mm -hmm. and he drops him this note. Your wife was murdered. Not, she didn't die. That's a number code. Murdered. Yeah. And a crazy ass number code, hexadecimal shit, which reminded me of incoming. But whatever. And, you know, so they start looking at. They're in uh, the Washington D.C. Smithsonian, and they got the world clock, which is the the population of the of the known world, mm -hmm. and it's seven point seven something billion humans, and you know the the teacher's like, oh, and the you know the clock keeps the tally of all of the people in the world, and one of the students is like, well, why is the, why is it going down, and all of a sudden the number is decreasing, and this plague is literally decreasing the number of people alive. And that is exactly what we fucking need because human beings are a cancer on this world and we need to be exterminated. That said, uh, I am not the cause of any of this cancer or anything like that, so I, I it, much as it's a great idea, uh, this is a fucking awesome series. And it reminded me very much of Dan Brown's Inferno. And if you've ever read the book, it's phenomenal. Do not let the the critics and the less than praise of the critiques dissuade you from reading what is a fucking stellar book. Do not see the movie. The movie sucks hard goat nuts. Wow, like the calcified wow. bad goat nuts. The book is entirely different and it's so good. So wonderful. The and it is, it is just bad goat nuts. Calcified bad goat nuts. The book is so good. It's so worth your time. God damn it. It's so fucking Watchmen. It's beyond my... And I, fuck, it's Watchmen. Did just talk, read it. It's Watchmen. Did you ever talk about that? No, we didn't. Oh, God. We, we will. We okay, will. Right. We'll close on that. Okay. Woo! Uh, you know what? Actually, that was the last of the comics. So what do you say we give away some comics? Yeah. Yeah. Yay. Once again, thank you guys for watching us and stuff. You know. And then we can talk about Watchmen. Yes. Because I didn't see it yet, so I don't know. Uh, like I've only seen a few episodes, so we 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 to take. Okay, I, I can't do that to you. Too, I can't do that to you. I can't oh, do that to you. You, you want to wait until I see all of it? I'll wait until you. All right. But that being said, uh, make sure you follow uh, the Peace Basement uh, Patreon. Make sure you, you know subscribe. You'll get a lot of great joints, a lot of great like you know exclusive uh, content, yada yada yada, so on and so forth. Peace Basement is also on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Um, follow us and then some. Also, uh, Peace Basement has apparel. 
merchandise and awesomeness on FreakinRepresent.com as well as Zen, Zen Rockstar and also Breaking Nerd News. Ah! And finally, also, hey Ramon, we love you. That's it. For the record, I'm teaching Greg really well. He he's he's almost got the speech down like to to the science. Almost. And it it it. Uh, I I just, I just I sit back just like a like a proud sensei, just watching my prize well, students. Thank you. thank you, sensei. No, it, it it's so great. It really is. <laughs> All right. So we have. A lot of books to give away to you guys. Let me go get them right now. Okay. Oh well. Hold oh on. shit! Before while you up there, pass yes. me that, pass me those gifts that you that I got. Oh yeah, where are they? To, to your right. right. To your right. To your right. To my right. Yep. Here we go. Okay. All right. So, thank you. This is cheese, right? Yeah, that was cheese. All right. This cheese got me this for the wall of Greg, and for those who know the wall of Greg, this would be a great addition. You got me bro Thor. I love you, brother. Thank you so much. That's awesome. And who got me this? That would be me. Uh, Technically me. <laughs> Pete also got me. J.K. Woodward. Pete got me this and also J.K. Woodward. Oh my god. Old school. Give me old school blade. What? What the shite? Oh, totally in the wall of brick. Oh, totally in the wall of brick. I thought you'd appreciate it. Uh, I love you, brother, so much. Love you too, babe. You can see the picture of that wall of brick. Oh, we do. Yes, 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 yes. We uh, we all will be in front of it. Uh, I people are begging me to do like a winter jump off. Uh huh. So we just might do that. I mean, the grill has been touched since like October. Yeah. So why not? So I was do that. That. But thank you, Cheese. Thank you, Pete. Thank You're everybody. very welcome, sir. I love you guys very much. All right. So we have entries upon entries, and we've got hats stacked up. By the way, this is the only time I will allow the hats to be put on the table because normally that is bad luck. We do not put hats on tables. That's a fair point. My grandmothers will be spinning in their graves. <laughs> but since it's for a contest, they will allow for this. I was going to say something really reckless, but I'll say that for a piece of paper. Uh, okay. Actual. Well, now, really funny. our first contest is for what would Skeletor do? Oh, I thought it was oh, this one. Yeah, I know you did. I know you did. It's okay. Great book. What would Skeletor do is possibly the greatest anti-self-help book you could ever read. And the question was, He-Man and Skeletor are usually at odds. They're mortal enemies, but sometimes they've had to team up to defeat uh, certain enemies. And the question that I so eloquently phrased was, uh, what enemy would not leave the Eternians alone and forced Skeletor and He-Man to team up to give him the cold shoulder? Now, you had to go back to Masters of the Universe and the original cartoon, and you got He-Man... The Sorceress, mm -hmm. Orko, mm -hmm. and yes, Skeletor, mm -hmm. when he told him, Skeletor, raise your Havoc staff to, to blow up the Frosty Comet to defeat Evil Seed, who was this like weird kind of plantish character who had wrapped everybody up in these weird vines and stuff. Because mm -hmm. vines, you know? Like vines. They're okay. bad. Yeah. You know, they're bad. Kind of so... What would Skeletor do? We have our entries, and we're going to draw out a name right here. And we have... Here we go. Here we go. We have Jonathan Shaman. Jonathan Shaman is the winner. What would Skeletor do? Excellent. You will be receiving that in the mail. Uh, slowly but surely. Slowly. Very slowly. Draw. I'm drunk too. High five, too. Yes. See, look. No All right. Elbow. No elbow. Just still got it right. Yes. There you go. Learn. Cheers. All right. We're on Woven Heart. Okay. Now we have two winners for this book. We have Woven Heart. We're going to give away the initial NYCC Dracula cover as well as issue two. Mm -hmm. That is the first prize winner, and the second prize winner will receive. The standard cover, also signed 
with a certificate of authenticity from any one comics. Our boy Demetrios has seen fit for that. Absolutely. The sir. question was, Wolvenheart is about uh, monster hunting. And who is everybody's favorite monster hunter, or at least mine, Joe Pesci. Nancy Pelosi. Joe Pesci, as a matter of fact, yes. Oh. Who would play a fantastic Simon Belmont on the silver screen. Wow. He looked In order to win this, what was the name of the Castlevania series in Japan? The answer, quite simply, was Akumojo Dracula. Dracula. Akumojo Dracula. That was the... That was it. That was it. Yep. So here we've got our correct names. And what do we got? What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? All right, we got one. We got one. We got one. We got one. Who won? Michael Borano. Michael Borano. You won. Wolvenheart. The top pick. Wait, we got one more. We, we got one more. Wait. I know. So I thought it was one. We got a draw. Who we got? All right, we got one. Who is winning the second prize? Kate Kostarski. Kate, we love you. Hey! We got the second place prize. All right, coming off to you. Excellent. Boop. DV9. Yes. Which is really RV9, but whatever. I'm sorry, it is RV9. I wrote DV9 there because I was drunk when I wrote that. This is there. There are names on the hats, so I can remember which uh, contest is for which hat. <laughs> There's a lot of hats on the table. Yeah, it is RV nine. As a matter of fact, RV nine was an awesome assassin book, featuring a girl who left her assassin guild to basically go up against all of her friends and former compatriots. Mm. And Pete's basement had their own assassination game to play. When we had to kill the evil Tish and all the other Puerto Ricans in the Ramones basement saga. What did we do to kill the evil Tish and banish her? What did we do? Do you remember? You were dead at the time, so I understand okay. if you don't remember. I remember. Pete, Roger, and Steve, the resident Italians, had to cross the streams of sauce and gravy. That is... Just so everybody's clear, we have the actual uh, Peach Basement Stunt product right here. It says sauce on it. The gravy one uh, met with an unfortunate end. So we have the tanker here that contains the sauce. Uh, that is the, the red that. sauce without any meat in it. Procured for Sunday and was aimed at the evil Tish. That opened up the, the portal and sent her to the Dark Domain. So we have DB9. Let us uh, get our winner here. Never knows that. It's okay. Oh yeah, that is there. Who we got? Who do we got? Who do we got? We have Randy Hunter. Randy Hunter, you have won RV9. Excellent job. Thank you, sir. Oh, phone dead. I'm all lost. I'm all first. Oh, no. All right, we got Battle Cats. Yeah. Battle Cats is an awesome series from Mad Cave Studios. You are going to win a great guys. Great guys. They oh. really are. Great they are guys. awesome. This is a black and white sketch cover from NYCC, signed exclusive. This series is the unholy mixture of Thundercats and Dungeons and Dragons. Mm -hmm. It is so good. It is. It is well drawn, it is a great story. And having not known Battle Cats that well, I wanted to give you guys a, a pop culture reference that you would get. That was actually a little hard to, to figure out, but you've done good. We all know in Thundercats that the planet Thundera exploded. And the Thundercats fled to Third Earth. Because there were too many what holes. What caused? There were too many holes. The too many ho ho holes. Yes. Too many cheetahs. That's, that's what the problem. Said, that's what I said Thundercats go. That's why. What go. caused the planet Thundera to explode? The correct answer was... Tainted Cabinet. 
Painted catnip. Yes, that is, is exactly what it is. No, that's not it at all. It was the Sword of Plumdar. The exact opposite to the Sword of Omens that Jaga dumped down a fucking volcano mm. and it fell to the center of the planet where it continued to eat away at the core of the planet until it exploded. So... Fucking Jaga blew up the planet. The Sword of Plundar blew up the planet. Mm. Here we go. We're choosing our our names. What do we got here? What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Uh, all right, we got one. The winner of the Battle Cats is Chris Cooper. Yay! Chris Cooper. Nicely done. Excellent. All right, the next one we've got the Last God. Okay, I had a lot of fun with this one. Okay, aside from loving this story of The Last God, we talked about this several weeks ago on uh, the Peach Basement Show. It is a DC black label that has absolutely nothing to do with mm. any of the... DC Universe proper. Yeah, pretty much. It's just a fucking fun-ass story. And I said, well, if I were to associate myself with any... God, uh, that being the, in, in the Greek pantheon, who would it be? Who? And we we had a good submission of Ares, which, yes, I am certainly angry enough to be Ares, but that wasn't what I was going for. Uh, while, whilst I am angry enough, and I, I, I would definitely dine to be Ares, uh, realistically, like if you were to hang out with me, on a regular basis, all of these cats know, I am Dionysus, the god of drinking and partying. Simple as that. So here we have the last god, and uh, all of you guys that actually submitted the correct answer. Thank you, y'all. We got, who do we got? Who do we got? Yep. Here we go, number 10. Amanda Prockett. Better known as Absolute. Well done. Well done. Well done indeed. You get the Last God signed copy. Excellent. Nice. Next up we have He-Man and the Multiverse. He-Man and the Masters of the Multiverse. You get the regular and Skeletor cover. Now, if you remember He-Man, watching He-Man, he turns into, you know, Prince Adam turns into He-Man and he blasts Cringer. With the, uh, you know, the, the power of Grayskull. And he turns into the Battle Cat. He-Man gets his power from King Grayskull. King Grayskull also had himself a, uh, a lion-esque steed. A tiger, you know, cat-esque mm -hmm. creature that he would ride. Yes. So the question was, who or what does King Grayskull ride into battle? And if you're a fan of the He-Man 2002 lore, which you should be, because it's it's good, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or the Masters of the Universe classic toys, you know that King Grayskull rode Battle Lion into battle. Mm -hmm. and arguably, it was a lot fucking cooler than Battle Cat, and I like Battle yeah. Cat a lot, but it's fucking Battle Lion. And if you look at this toy with the mane and shit, you don't have it. I, I don't. I. It's so fucking cool, but it's just, mm, forget it. It's a problem. It's a fucking problem. Battle lion. Even the name sounds cool, mm. don't it? All right, what do we got here? What do we got? We got a few people who know the correct answer for that. Oh, we finished the what top out. All right, what do we got here? We have Keelan Andy hey. has won the He-Man and the Masters of the Multiverse. Yes. Nicely done. Nicely done. All right. We only got two more contests to go over. We have Starport. Starport was the George R.R. R. Martin signed novel that has absolutely nothing to do with Game of Thrones. The question was, at... The Battle of Blackwater, because ports and stuff. Who fired the arrow that ignited 
the wildfire that set fire to Stannis' fleet. Joe Pesci. The answer is Joe Pesci. Yes, as a matter of fact, it is. And Joe Pesci played a stellar role as Sir Bronn the Blackwater. Sir Bronn of the Blackwater fired the arrow. And we have Starport here, and we're going to fiddle in the in the hats. And we have, because we have two copies of this, we got two winners. Who do we have? We have Rebecca Vath. Rebecca, thank you for entering. You have won Starport. And we've got, we got another one. Who do we got? Who, who do we got? And I got one. I got one. I got one. And we have Matt McIntyre. He nice. wins. Matt, congratulations. You have won Starport. And last but not least, we have Undiscovered Country. We have three covers here. One, two, three, but only one lucky winner will get all three covers. And who will it be? Who will it be? Who indeed will it be? Would you like to draw it? No, You sure? Yeah, sure. All right. All right. I'm, I'm looking. I'm looking. All right. I got one. I got one. I got one. Here we go. Here we go. And... It is Randy Hunter! Randy! Congratulations, dude! You have won Undiscovered Country, signed by Scott Snyder and Charles Soule. You got three fucking comics, plus I believe you won something else uh, back there. I think you did. I'm not sure what it was, but I think uh, I remember hearing your name before. Uh, I'm drunk, so I'm not, I'm not quite sure I remember, and Ramon just has a bad memory altogether. So there it is. That, man, we we just gave away, like, fucking nine comics, bro. Mm -hmm. Like, awesome. And thank you all for entering. This has been one of the greatest Peach Basement contests ever. And we are really happy to ring in the new year by giving you all of this stuff. It's like a late Christmas present. I'm not going to wrap them. I'm not. But I'm going to send them out to you real soon. And I promise you... It will take far less than, please, the last six weeks or more to, for delivery. Uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, fine print, fine print. Yeah. Uh, but no, I, I promise I will get this to you real soon. I will get my ass to the post office. That's a promise. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you all, everybody. Uh, make sure that you subscribe to the hall. We got a great newsletter coming out. You can see what me and Ramon are picking up each week. Steffi puts a lot of effort into putting together the whole newsletter. So make sure you subscribe. And thank you to all of our patrons. Without any of you, none of this would be possible. Thank you so much. You have bought us a new camera. We've got... We can't fucking wait to try out. I'm still waiting on Roger to get his ass here. So we're just going to blame Roger for this. Uh, cause it's easy. And Hannah. Yeah, and Hannah. It's all their fault. So we're gonna test that out, and we're gonna get the new camera going. And it's gonna be dope. It's gonna be really fucking awesome. We've got so many great things planned in Season 13. Wanna get yourself a cool Pete's Basement t-shirt? Wanna get yourself a Breaking Nerd News or a Zen Rockstar t-shirt? Head over to represent.com forward slash store forward slash Pete's Basement. Ugh. Oh, God, that was good. What was it doing? That was good. Pick up a t-shirt, a hoodie, whatever you got, and make sure you send us a picture of you rocking that t-shirt because we are going to put it up right here on the Peach Basement Show. Thank you so much for rocking our stuff, and we love you guys for watching any and all times. Thank you so much. Hit us up, questions at PeteSpaceman.com, Facebook.com, forward slash Pete's Basement, Instagram, Twitter, etc. At Pete's Basement. And that about does it. I've got a little bit of whiskey left. It has been an absolutely fantastic first episode of season 13. It has been extra long. Greg's half asleep. We're great. I'm drunk. I'm just going to fucking load this shit up. Completely uncut. I don't care. 
Enjoy it. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. And that's it. And we will see you next week. Salud. Hey, Pete, this is Batman calling you from Wayne Manor. Happy birthday, Pete. This is a shout out just for you from Maria. I am vengeance. I am the night. I am Batman. And remember, Pete, it's not who you are underneath. It's what you do that defines you. <laughs> Okay, now this is Kevin. Happy birthday. Um, the thing I, I think people love about Batman so much is that he's the one superhero that has no superpowers. He can't fly. He can't see through things. He's a mortal man. He's a very flawed mortal man. Um, but he does extraordinary things because of his passion, his, his goodness. But he has only his mortal self to do it with. You know, so he does amazing things, but sure, out of sheer force of his will. And I think the big, there are, there are many lessons in Batman. The biggest one, of course, is to be a giver, to give and give and give. He never stops giving, and he never, ever, ever gives up, ever. And the audience loves that about him. They love his tenacity. Um, they love his decency and his goodness. But there's another lesson in Batman. Um, because he pays a huge price. He is incapable of allowing himself to be loved. And he knows that. He's a very flawed individual. And he knows he's flawed. The audience knows he's flawed. It's what they like about him so much. Because he's so human. Well, his flaw is, is unable to be loved. And when you give and give and give the way he does, and you have no love in your life, there's no well to go back to, to replenish you. And he pays a huge price for it. So that's the other lesson from Batman, is, is what to avoid, uh, to avoid that loneliness. And I think you've already learned that lesson, because Maria tells me that you are the greatest guy in the world, in capital letters. The greatest guy in the world. So you've got a buddy in Maria. And so if you're getting that kind of devotion from friends, that means you've already learned that Batman lesson. So take care, Pete. Have a great birthday. And remember, Batman's got your back. <laughs>